Hello, everyone, I think. How are you? I hope you're well. It's me, Amanda. I think this is working. This is my first time using, I'm using a different thing and it's blowing my little mind. My mind is blown. So uh, my image quality won't be quite as good because I'm using this new technology. But other than that, it's going to be nifty, guys. I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, I have a special guest with me today that I'm very excited to bring on to chat with me about this very bizarre story. Uh, my good friend who I worked with at Top 10 Nerd way back in the day. Well, not way back, but a few years ago now. And now she runs her own amazing channel called Casually Comics, which if you have not followed that, you should do that. I'm going to pop that into the chat for us right now. And I'm going to bring her on. This is my friend, Sasha. Everybody say hi to Sasha. Some of you, most of you probably already know her, but yes. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm just chilling and uh, very excited to talk about Wolverine with you, especially considering when we were talking about it before, just your reaction was like <laughs> priceless. I was like, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sasha knows about this. I wasn't sure what to expect, and it wasn't that, so... <laughs> Yeah, it uh it's pretty it's pretty wild. It's a pretty wild one. Also, Angelus, thank you so much for subscribing over on Twitch. Uh yeah, thank you for that. I don't know if it'll show me everything on here, so I'm just gonna like be constantly flitting back and forth between my YouTube chat, my Twitch chat. I have a chat on the sidebar, and I'm gonna have notes up, guys. So if I miss anything, like uh like a like a points redeem or if you guys are subbing or doing something cool and I miss it, please just shout it out in chat in case I miss. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. I, I'm excited to discuss it with you. And I wasn't sure if you were going to think it was off the wall as I did initially. It's, it's not but like off the wall specifically what I think about it. It's that it never went in the direction that I was expecting. I kept expecting it to settle into a, a certain tone and it never did. It just kept pivoting. The tone is directions. all over the place in this story. It is ever evolving. And I mean, for me, there's also just so many things that are like the this this story that we're going to be talking about today, guys, it's called The Lazarus Project. Just keep in mind that that's what this is about. The Lazarus Project. Right? You'll definitely have to keep it in mind <laughs> because <laughs> otherwise you might forget forget what's happening in this story <laughs> and when we get to the end of the story i want you guys to ask yourself we're all going to discuss i want us to all discuss what is the lazarus project and let's see what we come up with <laughs> as a group because i think it might require that um so yeah uh oh my gosh oh my goodness nathan over on twitch is saying that your hair is looking so fetch oh thank you very much i appreciate that this i mentioned this on my channel on the last stream I did that I had a wig that I really liked that I haven't worn yet. And it gave Velma vibes and it was this one. I know it's not brown, but it's the cut and the shape of it. I I like it. I definitely get those Velma vibes. It's kind of like more of a, like a cool Velma though. Like it's like, like a, like a Scooby-Doo apocalypse type Velma, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Everyone's here. We got lots of cool people in chat. We got Christopher, we got Chemdog, we got Hobbs. Wait, wait, is this the one? Oh, wait, sorry. Sasha, did you wear in those cool <laughs> wigs, though? <laughs> Sasha does. Uh, Hobbs is asking about if this is the one with the cyborgs at the end. Um, maybe. <laughs> there are many that have cyborgs at the end, so we'll see if this is the one you're thinking of. Because you're yeah, asking that yeah. of this era of Wolverine is... <laughs> There's could be a lot of things. <laughs> there is. I always think of... Alfred when I think of cyborgs at the end and LCD who I also love but they're not in this one sadly we should talk about that one, that another time though because it's a good one all right okay okay Kim talk says I've read it several times and I still don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm with you I'm with you there Okay, well, let's uh, let's jump into it, shall yes, we? Let's pull let's... it up. Let's try and give them the experience. Let's so. try and figure out what's happening in this story. Cool we'll covers are happening is what's happening. Cool, cool covers are happening in this story. I'm also reading this right now. I have this up on Marvel Unlimited. So if you guys are not on Marvel Unlimited, I'm not sponsored by them. 
but oh yeah albert not alfred you are correct reaper you are correct yes uh then you should check out marvel unlimited because it's really great and it's very affordable and there's so many comics you can read it's awesome it's definitely worth it if you read a lot yes if, like, and if you want to check out a run from the beginning I'd say that's what it's really good for. And especially, I don't know if you've noticed, but on the Kindle, some of the digitized versions are slowly disappearing. Like there's kind of. What? Yeah. Like not from your library, but just from oh. being able to purchase them. They're just oh. kind of slowly, you know. Yeah. Well, because they drop the ball with like just even having digital comics. Yes. That's a whole thing. It sucks. But. Yeah, Marvel Unlimited is really good, especially if you are worried about not being able to get them somewhere else. This is like great for almost everything. And I mean, it's not up to date, but if especially if you want to go back in time, it's really good. Uh, all right. Comic Toby is saying, I have that Wolverine. Nice. Nice, Comic Toby. First printing. That's cool. Rip Comixology. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yes, Open Mike Eagle. Also, hello, Open Mike Eagle. How are you doing? Uh, all right. So let's get into this. So we start off. Well, actually, before we talk about this, wait a minute. You want to do some history. Myself. You want to do some history. history. <laughs> but this is what we're going to get into. Um, well, let's talk about this. So I first read this as part of my comic book club on OF. And I, when I read this story, it was a whole process. And when I finished it, I was like, who wrote this? What was this? I have so many questions. And this was the first time that I actually took note of Joe Duffy. And at first I was like, who's this Joe Duffy? And then I found out Joe Duffy is like kind of a huge deal. Uh, Miro is saying Magneto in Rogue. The guy is like 80 years old. What was Rogue <laughs> thinking for Gambit? Oh my gosh. I don't know. Okay, I never read Magneto is old. It's like intellectually I knew that that had to be the case, but they never drew him that way. So... <laughs> I always think of Magneto as being like maybe in his like 40s and also being like a hottie. So you've got to stretch the timeline. You've got to play with that timeline stretching. But I don't, I don't know. I know he's definitely mind. an older man, though. Yeah, we he say. Is. But I don't he think is. that Rogue would care. Like, I just I don't know. I he's think he's got that inside edge because he can touch her. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one else can touch Rogue. Well, other than the Sentry, but we don't talk about that. That one's even worse. So we won't go there. Uh, but yes, don't worry. Also, we'll probably end up talking about some X-Men 97. Stuff probably. Maybe at the end. It's definitely on our brain. X-Men 97. Yeah, we've been we've been texting about it. We both yes. have a lot of thoughts and also if you guys didn't see sasha also did her review that went up today actually so you should check it out i watched it earlier it was really good i also love that you were just like i'm just gonna stream of consciousness this because i have a lot of thoughts and i'm just gonna let's see what happens uh, I, I always regret whenever i do that like i do and i don't i love that i do it because it gets it out but i never get to be as specific and then there's always someone who comes in is like how could you not know and i'm like i did know about this thing i didn't mention we were just stream of consciousness in this we're getting it next time we're getting there because i do want to get in depth with some of like the fun references not necessarily easter eggs but just some of the lore they pulled out because they do it very casually like they used to do yeah. in the original series so it's just kind of there it's not necessarily like this scene from this issue it's more this was a thing that happened sometimes yeah i would say that i mean see this is the thing i'm a very like stream of consciousness person when i do all of my reviews like i have notes for sure and sometimes i deep dive on stuff and then like i go really in and i triple mm. check everything but sometimes I don't. And because I stream a lot, sometimes people will come in and they'll just be chatting comics with me. And I'll be like pulling alternate earths out of my brain. And people will be like, actually, you got that wrong, just so you know. And I'm like, yeah, I'm aware. I'm like, I'm pulling it out <laughs> of my brain. It's Some of these things will not be accurate. Sometimes when I when I say, I think it's this, don't take that as it's definitely Don't run with that. it. Don't, Go don't check. <laughs> you should double check if I say that. If I say, I'm pretty sure I'm probably right. And if I do not, add any caveat then it's something that i know is correct so i that that's how i do most of my things though i just write these notes and then i'm just like let's just see what happens and see what i say about it <laughs> um speaking of that uh mm -hmm. these notes have basically had me say oh that's so nice actually open mike eagle is saying i enjoyed the casually comics review oh that's thanks so nice. i appreciate that that's i've fun. enjoyed discussing with people on it it's been fun to hear what people have thought about the first two episodes my favorite is the comments section for my review. It's just been really lovely getting to, I was saying today, I was like, you know what I'm sad about? I don't have time to go to the comments today. And like so many new comments are in there and I really mm -hmm. want to talk to people about it. Um, 
And I'm not looking forward to, I know eventually there'll probably be a day where I can't respond to every single comment. And I'm like, going to be sad when that day comes. Because <laughs> I no, love I hear the comments. You. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So, yeah, that was my experience with Joe Duffy. His first time coming into it. And I had to know, what is this? How did this happen? What's going on? So I tried to find out some more information about what was going on behind the scenes at Marvel Comics What'd you at find? this time. Not much. Here's what I got. I got that um, I got more on Joe Duffy's um, sort of origin story with mm -hmm. comics, which uh, there's also a really good Women of Marvel podcast episode that she did an interview with them. If you guys haven't checked it out, it's from 2020. Go back, listen to it. I love Women of Marvel. I'll, I listen to it like religiously. So um, but yeah, uh, basically her origin story is that she was a comic fan. She came into comics. She became a proofreader. From there, she becomes an, a writer through writing down plots. So like people would give, you know, the plot and yeah. then you would fill in the dialogue. And then from there, she became an editor. And then from there, she became also like more of a lead writer is what I would say. Uh, and like really pushed to get her own book, which is when she got Power Man and Iron Fist. Obviously amazing. Everyone loved that. And uh, she also did this Wolverine story. <laughs> and this was right around the time, I think, that she was more getting ready to kind of branch out in some more other publishers in the nineties. Yeah. Because so, like, like I was talking to you off air, like I got into her through Catwoman and that era over there, which would be pretty much like around this time or just about mm -hmm. after this, that she'd be going over to like DC comics and starting to do stuff with them. So that was interesting to me. And it made me wonder like, how did that affect the writing at this time? And one of the things I also found out, this was something that Louise Simonson actually said, and I found out about it through a blog post, but one that had a bunch of sources. So hence why I trust that this is a legitimate mm -hmm. quote that basically talked about how when Rob Liefeld came in, um, things kind of started changing and shifting a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Bob Harris to deal with Rob Liefeld kind of started to push some other people out. And Louise said that Bob was not a guy that like would just tell you like you're not needed here on this. He didn't okay. like to do that. He didn't like to make those calls. So instead he would do like kind of passive aggressive things. Like he would um, make changes uh, to the plot or make changes to the dialogue and then mm -hmm. not communicate with his writers. Or he would say, oh, the plot's changing it's because of the artist. Or he'd say, oh, this dialogue changed, and so now this doesn't really make sense. I tried to contact you, but I couldn't get a hold of you, so. And that would really mess you up with the Marvel method. Like, that kind of thing, if you're working through the Marvel yeah. method, could really make things difficult. Oh, just in the chat, I see that Serenity is asking what issues of Catwoman did she write? And this is the 1993 Catwoman era, the Jim Ballant Catwoman era or the boob sock, really tight purple costume era <laughs> that I, I really, I do love really that like. costume. I yeah, really like too. it. I love that era. So <laughs> me too. I also like that era. Like it's, yeah. I mean, I know it's a controversial era. Um, MKF 30 is asking curious if you two are excited for the Caped Crusader by Bruce Tim, who did the animated series. Uh, what do you think, Sasha? I'm going to ask you first, actually. Uh, you know me. I'm always like, trust nothing until it's actually airing in front of you. The concept of it intrigues me. It's already moved around a little bit. So we'll see like how it lands and if it happens. But I'm always like, let me see. Let me, let me wait and see. I'm always yeah. on the side of cautiously optimistic, if anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say that I'm definitely interested but i also feel like we don't have like i want to i want to see more i feel like we don't have enough stuff yet but i like bruce tim so mm -hmm. i'm hopeful i'm hopeful is where i'm at i can't wait till we get more stuff on it there's like uh, there also there's a million trailers that just dropped guys i have to do like a million reactions tonight or tomorrow morning <laughs> i saw that today there's just been like they said today was the day <laughs> They're like, oh, we're going to drop like six trailers. I was like on various <laughs> fandoms. There's like new Doctor Who. There's a new like Penguin trailer. I haven't seen the Beetlejuice one yeah. yet from the other day. House of Dragons just had both tra two trailers. Green and red. So. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Or green. Yeah. Green and black. Is that what it is? Is <laughs> is it green and red or green and black? But yeah, for the two houses, which I also love that they're adopting that thing that us fans just started making a thing and now they're like that's our thing baby <laughs> perfect 
Uh, Miro is saying can't draw feet, AKA Rob live. <laughs> Look, Miro, you said it, not me. I just want Rob, if you're out there watching, just FYI. Uh, yes, that Rob Liefeld though, that is the one. And so apparently because of that, Bob kind of started pushing people out and Louise was basically saying that they were all kind of being nickeled, nickeled and dimed her, Chris Claremont, Peter David, and Joe Duffy. Mm -hmm. So that timing kind of lines up for me. So I'm wondering if some of that is reflected in some of the things that happen in this. I mean, I think maybe, but you may also just be searching for an explanation as to why some things just never this, connect with each this other. This could just be what, what we're doing. It's also at a weird point in Wolverine. So having read a lot of this um, era and this run from Wolverine, mm -hmm. we're in a we're in a period where before this, um, we basically, like this is like kind of an in-between time. But when Joe came on, Joe actually did a few issues before this as well. And then this whole story. So I wasn't sure if initially Joe was supposed to be doing more Wolverine or if she was just filling in a gap or... Mm -hmm what that was because i think before this there was an issue by peter david that was also kind of like a gap and then before that i think it was archie goodwin and joe was also really close with archie goodwin because she used to be his like assistant editor i think mm -hmm. so they would like work together on a lot of stuff so i'm wondering if he maybe was just like joe why don't you do some stories on this because she also said that she used to write backup stories Mm -hmm. And she was saying, I used to write these backup stories and I was really thankful a lot of the times they didn't use my backup stories. <laughs> uh, also, Joe Duffy is apparently amazing in Star Wars, Marvel Star Wars stuff. She's a huge Star Wars nerd and she was loving writing that. So now this has made me be like, I need to go read Joe Duffy's Star Wars comics. Anyways, that's basically the history I have. That's pretty much all I have. Mm -hmm. After this, Larry Hama comes in and he takes the ball from there and he runs with it. Larry Hama Wolverine is some of the best Wolverine I've ever read. And I feel like that's the one that people tend to remember for yes. the, for the most part. I thought, I mean, there are reasons to remember the Lazarus project hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, there's many. We're going <laughs> to, let's get into some of those. So a brief synopsis before we jump into this. Uh, so the Lazarus project is an interesting story. It starts off really promising. It quickly takes a turn into something else entirely. <laughs> it gets a bit bizarre in terms of some of the things that are proposed in the story. It deals with supernatural elements, kind of a military conspiracy that also maybe is connected to the government, mad science. And amnesia. You know, amnesia. <laughs> family. Family is a big part of this event. War crimes. War crimes. <laughs> just. And it always just makes me wonder like what was going on behind the scenes because it is it does feel weirdly disjointed as a story. But it's very clear to me, and it, I will say that I think Duffy really understands a lot of the characters that she's writing so well. That Definitely Those are the Wolverine. best parts. Yeah. I was really enjoying Wolverine's aggressive inner monologuing. So I love his inner monologuing so much. Um, so yes. Uh, all right. Let's, without further ado, let's just get into this. So this is, uh, uh, yeah, issue 27 um the lazarus project part one predators and prey it's written by joe duffy artists john bashema and dan green letters by ken bruzenak colors by glennis oliver editor bob harris editor-in-chief tom defalco um and i'm gonna have to do credits for each one because uh the other thing that makes this thing weird i think the creative team changes uh, pretty much every issue so get ready for that all right so we we start off and we have wolverine and Tiger Tiger in Mad Rapport in an alley. And they got to deal with some goons. And I like that it also starts off with Wolverine once again, like introducing himself to us. I love, I love well, when every it's, issue it's starts helpful. That it's, it's good, it you know, it's especially if, if you new. just jump into it and you haven't read it before. And it's like, oh, who's Patch? What's going on? Yeah, who's this guy? What's going on with this? It's like, it's all here for you, which I really like. Um, and then basically, yeah, to get in a fight with these goons which is pretty crazy. Uh, and, you know, you shouldn't get in a fight with Patch because Patch is also Wolverine. And even if it, he was just Patch, honestly, I'd be pretty scared of him. But the thing that really, I like the thing that really scares these guys. Also, if you notice lurking in the shadows, there's another figure here. Uh, for those that mm -hmm. are not familiar with this run, that ends up being Karma, which if you were reading this, you would probably have known if you've been reading it ongoing. But 
for those that were new to it, they'd be like, ooh, a bit of mystery. Who's this shadow woman over there? Uh, so they have this little fight. And then the best moment. Oh, the Tiger. reveal, the dress reveal. Mm -hmm. It's the wonderful. Reveal. <laughs> it's so good. Tiger Tiger's just like, it's me, Tiger Tiger. Look at my amazing dress. And of course, these guys run away. I like that what scares them ultimately is not the fear of potentially being killed by Patch, but it's Tiger Tiger in the stress. Really. Well, I mean, she is a very powerful crime lord, so we need... <laughs> <laughs> she is. But I also love how Wolverine's like, I gotta protect you. And she's like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm actually, you are my bodyguard, but I'm also like, I'm kind of good because I am Tiger Tiger. <laughs> Have you seen my dress, Wolverine? That's what she's saying. <laughs> So uh, then we find out that, yes, the woman in the shadows was Karma. They go into her backstory. And we also get a nice intro to her. <laughs> it's like, well, who's Karma? Well, let us explain it to you in this one page. I'm like, That's lovely. the thing. This first issue, 27, it's very good for if you were just jumping in at this arc because it does explain everything that you everything. need to know. So, like, if you were to tell somebody, start here, like, you could from that standpoint. But from other standpoints, not so much. <laughs> Yeah, it really is a good a good moment, I would say, to jump in. Uh, amusing streamer says, you are my bodyguard, but only for show. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Tiger Tiger, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we jump into it. And then uh, the other thing that we learn about uh, Karma, which I think is really important, is that her brother and sister are missing. If you know Karma, then you know this is something that, like, haunts Karma, like, her whole character their brother and sister go missing. They're found. They go missing. They're found. I think maybe they go missing one more time. <laughs> it's, a lot. it's a whole thing. Anyways, we haven't seen them since 2012, I think, in the comics. So um, they're missing again, guys. I don't know where they are. Maybe they're on Krakoa. Maybe they're not on Krakoa anymore, considering what's going on with that. We get to the Princess Bar, a staple, if you know Madripoor. One of my favorite places to go when I'm in Madripoor, personally. Um, I love Drew's hair here. Jessica Drew's hair. This is literally what I wrote in my notes. I was like, my favorite, the Jessica Drew short hair era, where it literally looks like a bowl cut. I love it. Like, it's just this front part, at least. It's so good. Also, I have to say, this run with Jessica Drew in it, there's also so many looks that Jessica Drew has in this that I'm like, I just want to, like, have her closet. It's so late 80s. She's your lookbook. Yeah. She has like so many like cool outfits that are just, I don't know. She's just very like chic in this, but very like casual. Even this outfit that she has on, it's so casual, but it looks so cool. And then we also, of course, have Lindsay McCabe, one of my favorites, who recently made a reappearance in Spider-Woman a couple years ago or like a year ago, if you were reading that run. And uh, Lindsay is working as a bartender at the Princess Bar right now. And then basically Spider-Woman and Wolverine have this chat about, I love this chat. It's such a, it's such a crazy chat. It's like them basically just trying to like one up on each, one up each other for like who's with the scuzzier person as their bodyguard. I know. Yeah. My thing is this was setting up such a clear tone. For the type of story that you are expecting. You're like, okay, like with CD, we're in the streets. There's gangs fighting each other and like underhanded bodyguards. And this is this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. And you're really settling into it because it's really selling it with all the different characters. And you're intrigued to see what's going to happen with the different crime lords and how they're going to interact. And then it just doesn't, it doesn't happen <laughs> at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great setup for something that doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, but I also just love like the kind of like measuring up of like who's the who's got like the the le least scuzzy person when you know Jessica at this point is the bodyguard for Prince Baran, who's super scuzzy. He like runs Madripoor, and then Wolverine is the bodyguard for Tiger Tiger, who is super scuzzy and is a crime lord. But like I love how the caveat is also like here like. Just that, like, well, Tiger Tiger isn't involved in, like, slavery or drugs. But so. that's the thing, because, like, he's, I'm keeping her out of that. That's yeah. why she's not doing I'm like, that's not something to... <laughs> that's not a brag, Wolverine, please. Like, if I wasn't Hatch, here, please. she'd be all up in the slave trade. Like, no, yeah. that's not... <laughs> okay. Um, I also love how, like, Lindsay's very sassy here with Tiger Tiger. And she, like, basically... 
he like gets into some trouble into some hot mm-hmm. water with patch um and with tiger tiger and patch is basically like you got you need to watch Lindsay. like she's gonna be killed like tiger tiger will kill her like she's not that hot <laughs> you you guys are in mad report do you know so uh jessica has to go because she has to go to work so she uh <laughs> Finishes this, her drink and goes to work. Is she drinking as well before she's about to go to work? Well, well they what? colored it like water, so we'll never know. We'll never know. <laughs> is it water or is it straight vodka? We'll never know. Uh, how many times can I say tiger, tiger? Uh, that's probably about it, actually, because we don't really because, see. Yeah, we're not going to see her for the most we're of it. We're not going to so. see her for the most of it. So I hope you I enjoyed hope you it. enjoyed the dress. <laughs> yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, DiCarlo. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, so then we cut to the village of rumica R- rumica it's like spelled like roomy cube i don't know i would say rumica but you know rumica you never, you never know it could have a different emphasis i don't think it's ever been said aloud in a form of media so we can go with rumica and here we find out that they're guarding this misshapen egg that is known as the master form you might be wondering why are we here and what is this about We'll and you'll keep wondering then because <laughs> but the master form is important and you need to keep that in your mind as well it's so many people important. want the master form it's so important <laughs> oh i love the master form so much <laughs> i love i hope someone brings back the master form one day like if i ever write for marvel that's I'm what you're gonna do that's the first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna be like can i bring back the master form they're gonna be like what <laughs> I'm You're obsessed. just gonna call your arc like the return of the Lazarus project. <laughs> the return of the Lazarus project. People will be like, "Oh no, what does it mean?" I'll be like, "We're gonna find out together this time for real." No, you so, have to still not, you know, just never still leave explain, it. <laughs> yeah, never explain anything. The return of the Lazarus project, and once again, it's a whole bunch of stories that what do they all mean? We don't really know. It's a mystery. Uh, so we also find out that back in Madripoor, who's looking at the master form, a picture of it. It's General Koi, who, if you don't know him, he is Karma's evil uncle. He's an evil guy. <laughs> yeah. And um, and basically, Karma arrives after helping uh, Patch and is like, she gets in trouble for being late a little bit. And she gets and, to learn about the existence of the yeah. master form because that's a lot of this. Lots of people hearing about the master form and the Lazarus project in the shadows, just getting glimpses as we're building it up. This, ooh, what is it? Ooh, what is it? Yeah, it is very much like uh, we're all gonna keep hearing things about it, and that's what we'll be hearing forever. The master form, the master form. What does it do? It's a mysterious object, the master form. Uh, so Jessica gets to work at the palace. And, you know, just starts commencing doing her bodyguard thing, climbing on the ceilings. I love that this is part of her routine as a bodyguard. Um, I just love that people have to know she's here in this capacity. And yet they still just have these extremely villainous conversations just about their plans, you know? Just constantly having these villainous (laughs) conversations around everyone. It's really a moment. I also feel like... uh, the other thing, oh, the other thing that I forgot to mention is General Koi also mentions at one point that like he wants to prioritize his missing um nephew and niece, Karma's siblings. Yes, for her. Like, for like, her. Mm-hmm. But can we also just keep in mind, didn't General Koi originally kidnap them to make but, but he cares not now. this time, but now he cares. <laughs> okay. All right, sure. <laughs> just him saying that, I was like, weren't you the one that first kidnapped them the first time they went missing? And then I love how Karma's like, I'll just work for him and he can help me. I'm like, I don't know if we should trust him, but all right. Uh, but, you know, that's going to be part of this arc for her, at least. So, I don't know. So, yeah, Jessica crawls around on the ceiling in the palace and um, she she finds some some bad stuff happening. Because, like we said, bad stuff's always happening. No one's trying to hide it. <laughs> so, she overhears basically about this, this project Lazarus. The Lazarus The Lazarus project. project. And we know it must be dangerous because they beat the crap out of her to keep it a secret. So, yes. yes. Um, and there's well, also a weird moment here where we get like an evil off between um, Dr. Page and Merrick at the beginning of this page mm-hmm. where they're just trying to compete for like who's like kind of more evil. And I was like, this is like if you're Jessica hearing this, you're going to be like, wow, like this sounds really bad. 
So she jumps in and yeah, she starts to get into the middle of it. And and Pinocchio is called and then here's Pinocchio. Yes. And Pinocchio is also important. And as is the fact, the name Pinocchio, of course, because you would never just use that name, you know, without it having some form of foreshadowing in some capacity. Yeah. So uh, just keep in mind that this robot is named Pinocchio. That will matter later on. Uh, yeah. And so uh, Jessica, we don't uh, the thing. You know what I don't like about this? I'm just going to this is a complaint. You don't like we, we don't get to see. <laughs> We don't get to see the fight. Like, and then Jessica's like all messed up from this fight with Pinocchio. I it's guess true. it's a bit of mystery is what we're Well, building. that's the, th the entire tone of this one I felt was what we were going for was this. We need to solve this mystery. What is Project Lazarus? It's dangerous. People are yep. getting hurt. Wolverine's going to have to go in and investigate. Yeah. And, <laughs> and somehow it's going to involve, you know, at oh, the we start, got I thought it's going to involve their rival bosses having a go at it no <laughs> the rival bosses i like that serenity q has a guess serenity q is saying let me guess the lazarus project is a way to duplicate wolverine's healing factor in other people you would You'll think see. that would be <laughs> that would be a good guess that would be a You'll good see. guess uh-huh um so uh yeah so jessica gets beat up we don't get to see it i also am not a big fan that she gets beat up either but you know that's just i'm just a huge spider woman fan so that's me being too much of a fan. Well, in all fairness, everybody's going to get beat up by Pinocchio. So that's true. <laughs> that's true. It's like everyone gets beat up equally by Pinocchio. Pinocchio's strong, strong boy. <laughs> um, so Jessica gets beat up. Wolverine finds her. Patch finds her, and then um, he and basically sends, by Jessica. Yeah, Jessica has to go back on the stretcher to. Uh, I guess at this time she'd be in San Francisco. I think. So, so like we say yeah. bye to her, we say bye to, bye uh, to Lindsay. Lindsay, and then it's it's all all Wolverine all the time, all Wolverine all the time. It is Wolverine. It's his series. Get out of here, ladies. But I love <laughs> how Lindsay leaves with like this like smack talk like remark where basically, uh, you know, Patch is saying like I tried to warn you guys like it's you're either predator or you're prey here. And then Lindsay's like, oh really, Patch? And just what does that make you? Because he's staying in Madripoor. That bothered me so much because it seemed like it was, again, it was one of those like, oh, is Wolverine going to be placed in a position where he is prey rather than prey? And, you know? <laughs> yeah. Or where he's going to have to like maybe examine that he's like a bad guy in examine some way. Examine his especially predatorial with, nature. Especially with him working with Tiger Tiger, maybe. Like maybe that's where we're going. No. it's not where we're going. Where we're going is back to the palace to punch Pinocchio yes. in the face. <laughs> or something. Um, but not really. Notice that there's this very important close-up of this map with mm -hmm. Remica on it. This is gonna be remember this. Um so I love the I love that Patch also well, I guess Wolverine now comes in saying, Which of you suckers is Pinocchio? <laughs> Oh, if I ever get a comic life. book tattoo, this Wolverine, I'm getting this. I want no this. one would understand. <laughs> no one will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Lazarus Project. So he does find Pinocchio, but um, it doesn't go as well as we would hope for Wolverine here. But not because of Pinocchio, which is what um what surprised me was how Wolverine gets taken out in this, and just nothing. I surprises surprises for me these entire issues because when you go to the next page you assume that okay he's also gonna be taken out by Pinocchio Pinocchio is the Lazarus project or something but no it's chemicals to the face chemicals to the face yeah that's what that's what takes him out although to be fair I think Pinocchio was giving him a run for his money at it's one true. point on the same page Wolverine says at the top um like about his about his claws he's saying but they can cut through anything except adamantium and you're not wait are you <laughs> by the way i was also like whoa are they like making adamantium robots when i was reading this i'm like what's happening this is crazy we're gonna talk about what these robots are made out of we're never gonna talk about it again nope nope why doesn't <laughs> why is this such a hard fight for wolverine I don't know, but chemicals to the face. <laughs> and then basically, uh, you know, 
Dr. Page, she does want to take Wolverine and experiment on him. So you you suggesting like the, the guess that Serenity is for his healing factor. I mean, that could have been a thing. But, you know, Wolverine hears that and he's like, nope, I'm out of here. I've had enough of that in my life. And he just jumps out the window and lands into the the harbor and um, uh, probably sinks. Let's be real, because <laughs> <laughs> he is coated in adamantium. So, yeah. And that is the end of uh, this issue. Yes. Um, what did you think of this after you finished this issue? Even though it was a bit disjointed, I enjoyed this first issue because I enjoyed I really the atmosphere of yeah. it. I really enjoyed the atmosphere and the setup, although I was concerned as we started to lose some of the people who we'd spent time setting up by the end of that issue, but there were still enough people left that it was okay. I wanted to know about the master form. I wanted to know what the Lazarus project was and that maintained throughout. I was genuinely intrigued as to what, how, how these two things connected and what it did. And the entire time I want, I wanted to see what was going on with that. So I was excited for the next one. So I was like, I need to know what happened to Wolverine. Did acid melt his face? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> what's happening yeah that's fair i mean that's basically how i felt after i finished that issue i think as well like i think the art is a really big reason why i really love issue 27 a mm. lot part one of the lazarus project um and i just wish that the team had actually stayed consistent throughout i think it mm -hmm. really does not serve this already kind of disjointed story it adds to the feeling to it adds a lot so anyways with that being said I'm glad that you enjoyed that issue. And now let us get into this issue. Sorry, let me just play around here. All the covers are so great. All for, the covers are really good. For the Lazarus Project. They are. They are. Like, I would frame these and hang them up. Also, uh, Jason is saying, oh, my God, the minute the door opened and Jean fell in and Madeline was revealed, I thought about Amanda McKnight. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know. We don't know what's happening with that, Jason. But... Uh, <laughs> But thank you for thinking of me. I appreciate that. Yes, Marvel, if you're looking for a Madeline Pryor for live action, I'd be happy to do that. I'll even play Jean as a bonus. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't even ask for that much more money, I don't think. I would I would keep it I would keep it chill. I would I, we could negotiate a good contract. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to start with, uh, yeah, part 2. So this is the Lazarus Project part 2, The Stranger. Mhm. Mm the other thing that I noticed is that, you know, this is also around a time when Wolverine started to be sold twice a month. So we're yes. going every two And weeks. they talk about it on the cover. Yeah. They talk about it on the cover. And after Larry Hama comes in, like very shortly after that, it goes back to being monthly. Mm -hmm. So I'm also wondering if that had anything to do with anything that was happening with this comic in terms of how it's being produced at this point. I'm not sure if that's a sales thing or if it's a, a timing thing. It is difficult to produce that quickly. And yes, I think in some ways we see that with this story. The strain let, let's get into it. Let's not leave them waiting as to the stranger. <laughs> This is The Stranger. Uh, it is written by Joe Duffy. Pencils by Barry Kitson now. We're changing it up. Inks by Keith Williams. Letters by Jim Novak. We even have a new letterer, which <laughs> is crazy to me. New colorer. Colors by Nell Yomtov. Editor Bob Harris. Editor-in-chief Tom DeFalco. <laughs> Completely different team. Uh, so what happens is Wolverine washes up on the shore here. He is in this village. Uh, and there is these fishermen in the water. And I love that Wolverine doesn't even answer them. He's like well, thinking in his inner monologue. This is my fate. I actually really enjoyed this, even though it completely derailed everything. But at this point, Wolverine has amnesia. He does yeah. not remember who he is. And I really enjoyed the inner monologues because they're just him basically moving on instinct, talking about how his powers work, how he can sense that people are afraid. He can smell them. He can hear them. And I really enjoyed that because it tied into the whole predator or prey aspect, which I felt that we were continuing. And it yeah. was interesting to just see the more animalistic Wolverine reemerging like in this way. And so 
I enjoyed that point, seeing him interact with the people, his natural instincts to help because he does save someone from a shark. Big hero moment. So true. True. I, he he basically when they say like who are you strange man that just walked out of the ocean, <laughs> Wolverine doesn't answer. But it's good because rather than let that awkward pause keep going, there is a shark attack and Wolverine does have to jump into action. He doesn't know who he is, but he definitely has the instinct to help these people. Yes, because he's a hero, and so he he does that. I like this next page because it looks like they're about to cut off this guy's arm. That is 100% where I thought it was going. But then they're like, no, he just pulled really hard. And then the net. <laughs> they're like, no, 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 we're just trying to get the net. But then Wolverine is concerned because he's like, you guys, like, this guy's freaking out. Like, you guys are going to cut him. Like, let me get this. And then he uses his super strength to basically just, like, rip the net apart. Um, Which is good because I don't think they would have welcomed him into the village if he'd cut that guy's arm off. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they would not. And I was, I was actually thinking of it um, in the podcast, uh, uh, along the long night. Uh, that is the thing that Wolverine does at one point to save someone's life. His, he goes like overboard, and then his arm is like stuck in this like trap, mm -hmm. and then Wolverine cuts it off um, to save his life. And so, when this, when I read this, I'd already listened to that podcast, and I was like, this could go in a bad, <laughs> this could go bad. But it does not. And he gets welcomed into the village as a result of saving that man's life, who his name is Leanne, I believe, um, or Leanne or Gian. That, that'll that that'll also come up again That's later. Gian, yeah. Yeah, Gian. Uh, so he gets welcomed into this little village. He's like, I don't know who I am. And they're like, that's fine. Just hang out here and we'll like even give you a house. And I was we like, We go wow. through an entire like wandering Ronin arc in a few yeah. pages. and. I actually really enjoyed it, even though so like, a lot I. of time is passing. I was noting that as I was reading this. I was, he's been here a, a while, while, but I was really enjoying his monologue of like how accepted he was by the people and like the young children come and show him like their hunts. And I was getting really invested in this, even though I knew it couldn't maintain. <laughs> oh my goodness. Also, uh, Jason is saying casually and casually comics. Your content is amazing. I really enjoy your videos as well. Both of you carry the genre. I used to watch top 10 nerd. Oh, thanks, oh thank Jason. you very much for the kind words. <laughs> so nice. Uh, yeah. I also liked this kind of weird Ronin story. Now that we're getting going in a completely different direction. Uh, and uh, Wolverine is haunted. Of by these Pinocchio. memories. By Pinocchio. <laughs> It sounds really ridiculous when you say it like that, but yes, by Pinocchio. The art in this issue, while still good, there are some things that I wasn't as big of a fan with. And, and this is where I was starting to be like, okay, this is starting to feel really weird. Because now not only are we going in a different direction in terms of the narrative, mm -hmm. but like this also looks a lot different. Wolverine's face up here. I was like, what's going on with that? <laughs> the fact that all these kids look exactly the same. It's very strange. I know it's a lot of faces to draw, though, but this kid, also, <laughs> the proportions, I don't know. It's it, This is haunting my nightmares, <laughs> this picture right here. <laughs> um, and uh, Wolverine at night likes to hunt things and kill them. Bring them to the village. Bring them to the village, which once again fits kind of into that predator-prey thing mm -hmm. that we were building, or it would if it went anywhere. <laughs> Uh, while this is all happening, we have, uh, Merrick, we find out who don't know if you remember that name from the last issue and this boy named target who seemed to be watching over the village. And they're worried that there's going to be people that are going to come here to take the master form. But Merrick is reassuring target that like, don't worry if they come, like we'll get to the village in time and we'll, um, mm -hmm. protect them. And it'll totally yeah. be cool. And that probably won't even happen. Cause like, pfft. Who's going to find the master form out here? And place? they also go on about how they're sure they've picked the right people to protect it. They're like, the master oh. form needs to be here specifically for reasons. So for reasons. This is not only remote, but these people are dedicated to the master form. It's going to be so cool. And we've seen they're very capable. They're hunters. <laughs> they hunt things. I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Um, meanwhile... Karma learns about the master form too. Everyone's learning about the master form. <laughs> Everyone's walking around being like, have you heard about the master form? Oh, I just heard about the master form. Did you hear about that? What does it do? We don't know. But <laughs> it, it looks, looks like, like a modern art piece and slightly <laughs> menacing at the same time. 
Like it's going to transform into something. That was the entire time I was waiting for something to come out of the holes or orb or just anything to happen with the master form. Master form is looking very green in that photo. (laughs) It is. It is looking very green in this photo. Um, It changes color depending on the lighting. That's not established in this, but it could be. I don't know. Um, So while Karma is getting this bad feeling about the master form back in Madripoor, back in Rumika, uh, Wolverine can smell something is off. Mm-hmm. And he tries to warn the villagers who are about to go on a hunt. And this is the point where the issue gets absolutely horrifying. Just, it it goes so hard from this point onward. And it's actually a bit of a, a difficult read going forward for the rest of this issue. Yeah, uh, maybe a trigger warning for you guys, because it's about to get really gruesome really quick. Yes. Um, so unfortunately, uh, Wolverine is right. There is trouble up there. And Rambo comes in and all these people die. Horribly. They don't just die. Like they they are massacred. Look at this. Look at this man. This pose. It's brutal. And not just the hunters. Yeah, no, everybody. Everybody. Absolutely everybody. Everybody. <laughs> yes, not to be confused with the master mold, Kem Dog, a totally <laughs> different thing. This is the master form. <laughs> it does different things, maybe. Um, they rush so- to protect it. So again, we're maintaining that this is this super important item. Like, John's going to defend it with his life. Like, they were the people chosen to protect the master form. And... Jen, the man that Wolverine befriended, saved his life. We've already got an emotional connection to this guy. And now they're like, all right, well, it's up to you, man. You got the master for him. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Anyways, right at this moment, Karma arrives on her on her boat. And um, she can tell something is also up. Um, however, is anyone here in time to help these people? I mean, Wolverine, we just saw, he already got shot. So he's already kind of down for the count. He's got a heal. He needs some time. He needs a bit of time. Um, and unfortunately it's just, it's a straight massacre. It's everyone's getting messed up. They see that Jan has the master mold. These people have spears. These people have guns. So yeah, that's how that goes. And karma. Meanwhile, is running, running through the jungle, thinking back to her own trauma, being like, I need to help these people. Cause like my brother and sister are like lost and I'm not going to like stand by while any other children are hurt. Which, unfortunately, is not the case. Not what happens. She tries so hard to help these kids, and in the end, it doesn't matter at all. Jeanne is also eliminated. Yes, through these brutal, like, <laughs> sharp... Look at this shoot- panel. <laughs> this is terrible. It's oh, my so, gosh. It's such a pivot. It's just, it's such a pivot. From, I was reading this and thinking back to how we started in 27. And it was just, <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's, it gets, it's really something. Uh, but fortunately, Wolverine does get back up. But not in time to save anyone. Not in time to save anyone, unfortunately. But he does get up in time to, like, just misses the window, too. Like, these kids save those children, yeah. Oh, my gosh. But he does get up in time to mess up all these guys, so that's nice. Oh, we also miss the part where, (laughs) after they are, are dealing with all of this, there's one point where they basically are just like, well, we dealt with all that. Is it in this issue? Are they basically... I'm not sure if it's in this one. It's it's later. Oh, maybe it's in the next one. The part where they're talking about having a beer. I was like, <sighs> yeah, okay. Maybe that's the next issue. Oh, my. It's brutal. Uh, but, yeah, Wolverine does get to mess up everybody, which is nice. And is some karma. N- n- not, not karma, but is karma in the actual sense of what that means. Not the character. And then he and then he also meets up with, with Karma. With Karma. Who he recognizes through her scent. Yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, don't you know me? I'm Karma. Like, we're, we know each other. And then that is enough to jog that and maybe the fact that he just got shot in the head. That's sometimes- what he says. He says in the next one that's because he was shot in the head. He's yeah. like a bullet to the brain dislodged by memory. <laughs> 
sometimes it makes Wolverine forget things and sometimes it makes him remember things. It's it not depends on whether he it. already remembers or has forgotten stuff before the headshot. That's <laughs> yeah. what determines it. It's like it's an like on and off switch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, it it uh it helps him remember and um everyone's dead. Everyone's dead. But the master mold, uh, the master, the master form, form is here. Doing it. The master form is still fine. Thank goodness. <laughs> And um, guess who arrives too late as well? It's Merrick and Target. And then we get this little showdown where basically, because we know Merrick was at the palace. Yes, with the Prince Baron and all that. Yeah. And we can smell, the the Wolverine can smell the scent on Merrick and he knows he was there. And he's So like, this is where Target gets to learn that his life is a lie, basically. Yeah, basically. This, this issue just took such a dark turn. It really did. All of it's really dark. Um, yeah, so Wolverine knows that all of the other guys that were there had Merrick's, like, scent. Mm -hmm. So Wolverine's like, this is you. You did this. And then Target's like, wait, I thought we were supposed to be protecting these people. What are you talking about? And then um, Target just kills him. Yep. I also love that he just met Wolverine. And yet Wolverine makes this accusation. And he's just like, I can smell the scent on all of these people. And he just is like, okay, I'm going to kill him. This man that he's also known his whole life. Well, I mean, he was pretty upset after the massacre and seeing how how brutal it was. It does tie back into his own trauma, which we'll find out later as well. So yes. that is true. And this this whole issue is just like everyone reliving trauma. It was amnesia speed run. Yes. So. <laughs> amnesia speed run. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so that's the end of the issue. And it ends with Wolverine, of course, remembering who he is in this yes. last panel where he says, I'm Wolverine. Single tear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what did you think of that issue? There were parts of it that I enjoyed. So it had elements. Unlike the, the first one where I enjoyed the overall pack is this one had moments that I enjoyed. And I... I want to phrase this in like a way that makes sense. I was in a way impressed with how far they went with the massacre, but it was undermined by the fact that it didn't mean anything. And that's the thing that undercuts it because you have all these really powerful moments. There's some great paneling. We're obviously playing with a lot of imagery and then ultimately it just happened because it happened. And I was like, well, you know, if we're going to do all that, we should maybe have it mean something just a little bit. Yeah, I but feel it, like. It has like, the, and the thing is, that's where some of the strongest art in the issue is, honestly. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. It's like, ah, oh, man, it's, it's just such a whirlwind of an issue. And I wish I could say it's going to get lighter guys but it's not gonna I get love this lighter. cover this is my favorite cover of all of them I have his terrifying my, mouth too. in there <laughs> it's I great love it. <laughs> it's great I, I I don't know if this is gonna remain as our thumb for this video guys I love this cover so much I have like an alternate thumb in the wings that is much more like what YouTube probably likes <laughs> for the algorithm but we were both talking about this cover we're both like isn't but this cover is so good it's so weird it's Oh, it's, it's like imagine scary, walking and past I really this like on a like a rack when it first came out and you're just walking through your comic shop and it's like this is looking at you Ugh. it's genuinely terrifying genuinely terrifying so uh oh i gotta click this button all right so um i liked this opening monologue though even though it was really dark and dramatic very dark uh and also so we're this is like basically a a montage of us grabbing all the corpses, put in a pile so we can dispose of the bodies. Uh, yeah. It's um, just asking, like, what is Rumika over and over again as it goes over the, the devastation that has been wrought in this poor village? Yeah. This idea of, like, it was, like, a, basically a place that was like Wolverine's home for a time. It was a place where like there were people that were able to like 
fight for things that they believe in. But they were a place that was like existing outside of time, but it was also a battlefield. It's so dramatic and it's so poetic. And I would say this issue, I think, has some of the most like poetic stuff in it, mm -hmm. actually. It's very like, <laughs> it kind of feels like a different like tone. It does. <laughs> Again, it, it feels very contemplative and the when we go from what is Rumika, it's a funeral pyre and i'm just like it's so it really lands it really does there it is there's that funeral pyre and this is the lazarus project part three the roadblock written by joe duffy pencils by still barry kitson we're holding on to him but inks by al milgram letters still by jim novak colors now by greg wright um, and of course, editor Bob Harris and uh, under editor in chief Tom DeFalco. So, uh, but at least Barry Kitts is still here. I'm glad. I'm glad he's actually sticking around because I do really like this issue. I really like a lot. I think mm -hmm. it actually might be one my favorite issue. I do like the first issue a lot, but I for me, it's just they do a lot of recapping in this issue. There they do a, a lot of there's recap. There's a decent amount of this issue that is straight recap. It's like, how did Wolverine get here? But let us explain in detail. Great detail. <laughs> great detail. Even though you've probably read it. But in case you haven't, let us explain in great detail. I think, you know what I like? I like it's that the three of them are sitting around this like funeral pyre of corpses, which by the way, would smell terrible. Yes, and of then course. They're just especially gonna to Wolverine, <laughs> especially to Wolverine, and then they're just gonna sit there and have like a little chat about like how did we all get here, and that's that's basically what this issue is. And I just love that it's kind of weird. Look at the lighting, really dancing works. across his face. Oh, I'm just transfixed by it. Look at the fire in his eye. Oh it's my nice. gosh, yeah, the shading on this is really good. So that's basically what we're doing in this issue. Like we're just having this little chat and recapping everything at initially target and Wolverine want to fight each other for really no reason. <laughs> um, basically they decide they might fight because uh, Wolverine didn't get his name and then they decide they're maybe going to fight. <laughs> <laughs> but karma's like, I mean, a bunch of people just died. Could we just maybe not fight for like a second? There was a lot of that last issue. Maybe this could be the issue where we sit by the pile of corpses as they burn and, <laughs> and think. have a little conversation. Yeah. So, uh, and they are talked down from the fight, thank goodness, because that would have been really. The dress silly. makes a return, most important. <laughs> <laughs> I get to say Tiger Tiger again because she's back. And yeah, we just get a recap of how Wolverine got here, which I'm not really going to recap because. Because we already know. You already we know. There. You were there for it. Um, and then Karma recaps her story as well um so yeah wolverine's like this is my life and i like how even in his life there's a bit of a recap of karma of Karma's, yes because that was part of his story so he's like let me also recap karma for you but then <laughs> after this i believe karma's like let me tell you my story well she so, no, she needs to recap the master form oh she, yeah, she picks up from where he her. left off and then goes with i learned about the master form and the lazarus project and <laughs> I heard about it and I was like, that sounds messed up. But also the weird thing here for me is that what she says, let me know if this weirded you out. She says basically that her uncle heard that they were going to go attack the village where the master form was. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh my gosh, no, that's terrible. Like we need to do something about that because the master form is there and we know about that and we want the master form. It felt like there was something missing. It felt like at this point we were supposed to know what the master form was because I also was like, but why does he care? Like I know based on the information presented, the master form is an important item of power in some capacity. It does something. We don't know and what these, it does. These villagers are protecting it. They've been chosen to protect it because they are like destined. They need to for some reason. But I have no idea why it was important that they were protecting it, why it would be bad if it fell into other hands. The thing that's confusing for me, so Merrick is working with Dr. Page, and Dr. Page is working for the broker, and the broker is working for General Coy. Mm -hmm. And Merrick is trying to get the master form by attacking the village and sending in his own guys so that he can not reveal that he really wants the master form, I think, for himself. So that he can get it, I'm assuming, for Dr. Page and Broker, who are working for General Coy. But General Coy acts like, no, the fact that these people are coming into attack, which should be their own people, 
in that weird roundabout way is bad. Well, because this is, yeah, because we're all tied into Prince Baran and it got convoluted. It got really convoluted, like really it got, quickly here. And it I was got like convoluted. And while I was intrigued by the mystery, it was also the kind of convoluted where I was like, I'm starting not to care. Like you're making this, you know, like I care about the master form and I care about the project and what it does, but like all the interconnected webs, you're starting to lose right. me. Yeah, well, I started to get lost just in the sense of like, why is General Koi involved? Like, what does he get out of it? Like, I really need to start to know what this is. Because if I don't know, like, it's hard for me to care about something that I don't even understand what the stakes are. Like, it's powerful, sure. And General Koi's involved and he's bad. <laughs> but like, what's the connection? So, And the thing is that this is the issue where we're going to get the most information that we're ever going to get about the master form and that's in target's backstory yes yes um <laughs> the most information we're ever going to get aka not very much so target's backstory is that basically his dad was approached to look after the master form yes they were chosen they to, were chosen to guard it by what seems to be the military who are working in tandem with the government, because apparently the mayor and the senator are both mentioned in this story as being people that are like, yes, you must protect the master form. Although it sounds like even the mayor and the senator don't know what it does. No one knows what it does. Well, because there's a scene, I think it's the next, like where he, yeah, I think it's coming up in the next set of pages where Here. he goes to talk oh. to his father. Yeah. Who is watching and he's giving this like speech. Talking to himself, I think. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He says, all that's needed for evil to flourish is for men of conscience to do nothing. So is it evil? Does it create evil? <laughs> I don't know. Basically, little target asks, what's that, dad? And he says, it's called the master form, son. It's what we've agreed to look after. But dad, what does it do? <laughs> dad, please, someone tell me. It's classified. <laughs> It's classified. Yeah, I mean, I don't think his dad even knows what he's been asked to protect. You know what I mean? Like, no one seems to know what this thing I does. I don't think Joe Duffy knows what the master form is. Why is it under a light as well? Like, why is it out in the open? Like, shouldn't it be in a safe or something? This also made me, like, uncomfortable. <laughs> I was like, this seems like a bad place to keep it. It looks like an so alien I egg in that shot. It does. Like, it's being, like, like they're like, we got to keep it under like the he, alien yeah, light. He's incubating yeah. it or something. <laughs> That's going to hatch any day now. Did the government officials tell you that, Dad? No, this is just my guess on what it could be. <laughs> I mean, he's also a professor, so I was like, oh, maybe the professor like is going to be key to this. So anyways, in the middle of the night, um, these invaders come, and somehow they also have a tank. Yep, they come, and they come for the master form, which is in a safe oh, now. <laughs> thank goodness. Not under the light. Uh, we also get this dramatic uh, moment where, like, Wolverine is is just... He isn't even talking to Target he's while he's telling the story. He's just looking at him through his claws. He's just looking at through his claws, thinking about what his story is. <laughs> thinking about how, like, maybe Target's, like, making his home life seem better than it was. Because, like, in our memories, like, we always remember things more fondly. Which is, like, a really cool, like, bit of inner monologue. But also, I just love that he's doing... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, so Target's there talking and just out in the corner of his eye, he's just seeing him flexing his claws open and closed. I would be very intimidated by this <laughs> if I were telling my story. I feel like, are you, could you stop doing that, please? I have trauma. Uh, so <laughs> the tank rolls in and of course bulldozes everyone. The whole neighborhood is uh, destroyed, I think, in this. And um, don't worry, though, because mom is sending Target and his cousin away because his cousin mm -hmm. was staying there. I don't know if he lives with them or what, but they're like, it's OK. Like, we're going to protect the, the master form and you guys get out of here in this oversized sweater and jacket for some reason. Um, and then the they house die. blows up. <laughs> Yeah, so I was like, well, I guess the professor doesn't have any answers for us because he's dead. <laughs> and these poor children get to be raised to be soldiers. Yep, that's what <laughs> happens next because then the people that gave them the master form to begin with to guard, for mm -hmm. some reason thinking this professor and his wife would be able to look after it. I don't know why. Uh, they come in and they're like, well, 
it's time. Do you guys want a chance to like get back at the people that like destroyed this whole neighborhood and killed all of your parents? I guess we'll like, take the master form and give it to this village now. I guess we'll give it to this village. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Are you going to give them advanced weapons to defend themselves? No, we're not going to do that. They have more weapons than that family did. So <laughs> <laughs> That's what they thought. They were like, look, these people have spears. Like, they'll be fine. If a tank comes through, they'll be fine. Um, uh, yeah, so that's basically Target's story. And he looks very moody after it um, with his knife on his arm. And uh, it's a really sad story. And um, then a second wave of people come in after all these sad stories and attack again to get the master form. But fortunately, they are defeated. Oh, my gosh. And then um, and then they asked. This part Kyle. bothered me. Okay, so the, the ending of this, there were parts I liked. I liked the moment with Karma where she decided that despite everything, they still needed to honor the dead. That it was important to take that time yeah. to do that and i thought it was also a really nice contrast between her and wolverine and it works well against their like with their characters it strengthens them both good moment and then we have the ending which made me so frustrated because they just leave the master for on the ground yes so this <laughs> is this is my this is the part where when i was reading this I, this is the part where I went, I'm sorry, what's happening? I'm so confused. Wolverine's plan is to leave the master form here. To leave it in the place where the people came to get it. He doesn't really explain why. He just says that that's what they're going to do. Like, he, he basically says that Rumika died for the master form. So the right thing to do is to leave it there. I guess it's like to honor their sacrifice, but also it's supposed to be a powerful something. artifact, <laughs> something <laughs> the bad guys want it. And your plan is, to, and there's no one here to defend it. And your plan is to just leave it there. Yep. Leave it there. So like all those people, they, uh, they died for nothing. Cause now anybody can walk in and just grab it off the ground. And That's if you plan. think that this is weird, you were correct. But also, it's going to get weirder than that. And I will I will say, I will suggest. I think it gets weirder than that, even this, with the master form. Because there's something else that happens next issue that I was like, I'm sorry, what <laughs> now? <laughs> so... So yeah, that's where we leave it, and um, and then they're gonna go back to Madripoor to yep fight the guys that killed all these people. Which honestly, yep. fair. I think maybe you should take the master form with you at least. Or I mean, I would have. I would. <laughs> I would have tried to use it as like a weapon to like fight the bad guys. At the very least, you can throw it at people. Like it looks very heavy. There's there's something that can be done with the master form. I feel like there's also a lot of friends, you know, that like especially like Wolverine and Karma know that they could like. There's some really like powerful people they could give it to that might be able to science it or something. Or I, I don't know. know. That's such a better idea. I don't know why I thought you were heading towards like, you know, that like art that they can give it to them and they can put it <laughs> on their coffee table. I mean, that would also be good. As long as they're powerful people, I'm pretty sure it'd be fine. I mean, no one knows what it does. So you could just start like a whole new rumor and be like, this is the master form. It's a beautiful piece of art. And I'm sure people would believe it because... I don't think anyone knows what it does. <laughs> like, do we actually know if it's powerful? Is it powerful? Is this a rumor? I This is also at a point where, like, honestly, after the... Okay, we'll talk about this in the next issue, but the next issue is wild. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, this is obviously where the wheels fall off really hard. Um, so but what do you think you going into this final issue? One. It is my favorite one because I oh, like I the... Know. I like the stories. I like the idea of it as a vignette issue. Mm. That's what I love. But I also love issues that are like, now we each have our own story to tell. Like, I'm like, oh, that's cool. I like Target story a lot. And I think Target as an isolated so issue, it works better than as part of the whole. Yes. Because as part of a four-part story arc, it recaps so hard for so I much of it. I would say as part of like a story arc, the first part is the best part. Mm in my opinion <laughs> but just as an individual issue i think that is why i like it because i like mm. this idea of like us sitting around and telling our little our little stories um 
Uh, oh my gosh, Chemdog is saying no other channel on YouTube would ever put as much effort into discussing <laughs> the Lazarus Project as YouTube. That's what you come to us for, Chemdog. Oh, it's the mystery. We'll solve it. We'll solve, <laughs> We're the mystery. solve it. This issue is gonna gonna explain it all, guys. <laughs> it's all gonna make sense after. I mean, come on, Pinocchio's four. on the cover. <laughs> yeah, we're finally getting back to Pinocchio, the star of the show. Um, move over, Wolverine. We're gonna do the Pinocchio mini. That's coming up next. <laughs> um, all right. So this is the Lazarus Project conclusion. You know, I was thinking, part like, four. sorry to cut you off, but it's just no, got go me ahead. thinking. Which is, you know, how they're doing all those Marvel minis, which are we're casting back to eras yeah. of history. This is the time. This is yes. the era that we need to fill in. We, we need, need to finish need to the know. Lazarus Project. Lazarus project and the untold stories of the master form. We could be, we could be talking about the master form. I would like to see a history of the master form where we never find out what it does, but we just find out like what its journey has been through time. I would actually enjoy that. It could be like a cursed object kind of vibe, you know, like, what yeah. Is it? What is it? What does it do? It could be like, you know, when people play those improv games and they'll mm -hmm. be like passing around this one item and then they all kind of come up with like different things of what it could be. That could be the master form. Like everyone has a different story for Just like different what stories it's to involving be. it. And it could be a vignette. I love a vignette. There you go. <laughs> everyone comes through and they're all like, we all have a different story about the master form to tell you today. Um, yeah, I like that. Uh, so this issue, uh, we have a different team guys. The team has changed again, but it's still written by Joe Duffy. Uh, this time we have pencils by Bill Jaska, inks by Joe Rubenstein, letters by Jim Novak, still, colors by Steve Buccioletto, editor Bob Harris, editor-in-chief Tom DeFalco. So I have so many feelings about this art. <laughs> I both love it and hate it. <laughs> it's because it's so different. Like the rest of it, even though there's Very been stylized. shifts, has felt more cohesive to each other than this one. This yeah. one is the one that really stands out in terms of, oh, this is different. Oh my gosh. Momentum Mortem says DC had a Lazarus. Oh wait, sorry. DC had a Lazarus planet. Marvel had a Lazarus project up next image <laughs> with the Lazarus potluck. I would come to the Lazarus potluck. It sounds great. I hope if image does a Lazarus potluck, they don't explain anything about what it is. Just like the Lazarus project. Don't but anyways, we're... It. We're going to find out what the Lazarus Project is, yes, right? Yes, finally. Right, Sasha, this is it. Yes, of course. <laughs> it's all coming It's all coming up. Well, here we have, we open with the, the broker. Not to be confused with the power broker, different character. But I do think the broker has power broker vibes, I just want to say. Um, he's a guy in a suit, and he's, in part, he's like in charge of like this project where we're like making powerful people. So it felt very power broker to me, but... It's not him because he has a different last name. So, and he looks different. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so we're working on Pinocchio mm -hmm. and uh, Broker makes like a, like a fun little joke about like how Dr. Page like thinks of herself as like Geppetto because the robot's name is Pinocchio. And we're just going to hammer it into the ground. We're not going to yeah. let it go. <laughs> yeah. We're not letting it go. And obviously that is going to become more and more. Relevant. That's important. Yeah. Remember that. Put that away in the box. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're talking about how they're talking about the project. They're talking about project. Yes. Lazarus, finally. And they talk about how they have subjects and that the, the subjects basically behaved as expected. Yes. And Pinocchio is of the Lazarus project mm -hmm. or well, Pinocchio is from the Lazarus Project. He is from the Lazarus Project. And that's what we know. Yes. <laughs> that's all we're really given because then we get interrupted. Because they run in like, oh my God, they're here. Wolverine. <laughs> I love these guys, actually. These guys are my favorite. I There are a couple of my favorites in the, in the issue. Hikaru and Genji. They are really not very much in this issue, but I just love like their expressions and how they're like always <laughs> worried about something like these guys have zero chill, which fair enough because they're like, Oh, everyone in room because dead. Everything's gone to shit. Wolverine's coming. It's terrible. And this is like, this is the part where they tell them that they just left the master form there. This is the part where the broker also responds by saying, 
interesting. Yet the master form with its deadly secrets was what the soldiers were after. The Rumikins died to protect it. There must be no proof we were ever there. Tell our people to leave it as is and return at once. Just leave it as is. What does it do? <laughs> what does it do? Why would you leave it? Isn't it supposed to be powerful? Because it, it almost makes it sound like they died to protect it. It must be really powerful, guys. <laughs> like, he's like, we can't be involved with the master form. I'm like, but oh, this is the thing that bothers me. Because in issue one, it's basically implied that, like, the master form is part of the Lazarus Project. Like It like, is. That they're yeah. connected. They're connected. To each other. That you might actually even need the master form for the Lazarus Project. You might. You might. But why? What does it do? <laughs> we don't know. And then literally they're like, oh, it's unguarded right now. And it's just in a village where there's no one because everyone there is dead. We should probably leave that. We don't want to be associated <laughs> with that. That would be terrible. What if someone saw us take it? How would I'm we like, cover that up? I'm like, haven't you been associated with the master form for years? Because we just heard Target's backstory. And unless he was lying, which I don't think he was. Also, this is uh, happening inside of all of these corrupt organizations that could potentially do some kind of cover-up if they wanted to i'm pretty sure like y'all are in with senators and stuff so i'm pretty sure you could just be like hey could you just tell people that that wasn't the master form and like make something up and then the senator would be like oh yeah i got you because i'm totally in your pocket with the lazarus project and the master form <laughs> anyways um <laughs> but anyways we're just gonna leave it <laughs> uh moving on See, uh then we made the right call <laughs> Wolverine made the right call. He was like, we should just leave it here. Nothing bad will happen. And he was right. Um, the broker now wants all the information on Wolverine because now he hears Wolverine is coming. We get this art, which I love the top half of this page. And I really don't like the bottom half of this page. Um, there's no, it's a lot funny because I find the reverse. I like the bottom, okay. but I don't like the top. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it's I the like this. It's the perspectives. I feel like the there's something about the way Wolverine's twisted on on the top there and the way his foot is placed against the broker's arm in the back i don't know it's just the perspective of it is throwing me off a little bit fair i like how it's like very like stylized and how i just love as well like the layout i feel like works really well and how it's this kind of like gradient line down and it's very swoopy but i don't know how i feel about the widow's peak that they're giving my boy wolverine like it feels really <laughs> intense like he looks like he's his all of his hair is disappearing <laughs> It's windy. It You're on a boat. Blowing in the wind. <laughs> so um, this is also a weird part because Power Broker is talking about Wolverine's bio. And he's basically like, uh, yes, he has adamantium steel claws, which are apparently bionic and which would categorize him as a cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> like, which is amazing. And I love thinking about, but just. <laughs> no, I was like, no, but. Okay. And I think this is another thing that people commented on because Joe Duffy did another issue, which is kind of like a background story on like Wolverine. I mean, it's not really. It's just he tells mm -hmm. a kid a story about this little boy that was raised by wolves. And a lot of people took it as like Wolverine's origin story because the kid also looks like him in the story and whatever. Yeah. Um, and then people were really mad at Joe Duffy and like that issue because they were like, oh, we don't want an origin story for Wolverine. He's supposed to be a man of mystery, according to Christopher Claremont. And then, I mean, granted, then Wolverine Origins happens years later. So sorry, everybody that was a fan of the mystery. But I'm just wondering if this is like, once again, we're just trying to like build more things into Wolverine that I was like, okay, he's a cyborg. All right. Or if that was maybe supposed to be something that connected him with like Pinocchio and their fight. And, and the Lazarus Project. <laughs> it's all connected. Um, so we're on the boat. And everyone's getting ready to go back to Madripoor. And this is like the calm before the storm. Yes. This is like the everyone's thinking about stuff. Um, Wolverine's doing a lot of thinking, as you can see from this page. <laughs> He's doing a lot of thinking. He's thinking about, um, you know, poor Target and how his life is sad. And Target's thinking about how his life his is cousin. sad. His cousin. He's thinking about his cousin and how they with. train together and their bond and how his cousin got really, really, he became a good marksman. They highlight that, that he's a really good shot. And that means that he gets selected for a, a special program and they get separated. Called. What's the special program called? 
I, it's too far away. <laughs> the Lazarus Project. The Lazarus Project. So uh, he's going to be part of the Lazarus Project. Well, I mean, they don't say the Lazarus Project, but they say, you know, the next phase of the project. They say the next phase. It's implied, though. Yeah. It's I think heavily implied. Heavily implied. I also really love this page. Like, the art, the layout. It's just really great. The colors. They're just... Yeah. The way they move. It's nice. Really pretty. Um, so, you know, that's going on. And then they're kind of talking about, like, what Wolverine's if we... eye is scaring me. <laughs> Which one? Ah! Well, don't mind that. <laughs> that was the excitement of my husband cooking something downstairs and not turning the fan on and oh, trying to no. burn our house down. So it's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's the Lazarus Project. <laughs> Lazarus project. They're coming for the master they're coming form. From, they heard us talking about it. Now they're trying to recruit us into it's the Lazarus here. project. Oh man, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. We're gonna be we're gonna be the next test subjects. Um, which eye are you trying? This eye, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. Why is his eyebrow so close to his eye? It looks like his eyebrow hair is about to go into his eye. This hair, I can't. <laughs> I really don't like this. This makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next page. Um, but yeah, so they're having this conversation just about what they're going to do with people if they run into them when they attack. And they kind of come to this understanding that like, if people run away from them and they're trying to actually get away, they're not going to like kill them. But like, if they got to kill people, then they're they'll cool with that. They'll do basically. it. They'll and do Wolverine's it. If they super must. proud of Target for coming to that conclusion. He's like, yeah, he's, he's very like, proud of him. What he he literally says like maybe one day this kid will have a brain, basically. <laughs> So that's a big compliment coming from Wolverine, in case you guys are wondering. Um, this is my favorite bit in the entire issue, which is where they get up and then Karma's going to use her powers to like control their minds so that they can like be taken in as hostages, but yeah. under somebody's control that Karma has. Mm -hmm. So they don't get messed up. And Wolverine just goes up to them because of this and just says, uh, when this guy says, who goes there? Wolverine's like, opportunity. Avon calling. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? It's so wacky and I love it. Also, why is Wolverine's uniform ripped? Did that happen in the previous fight? <laughs> Showing a bit of thigh. <laughs> I didn't notice that till now. All right. <laughs> the panic face. I love it. Uh, yeah. General Koi in this uh, has the best faces. And I will say, I think something that I actually really do like about this artist mm -hmm. is I just love how animated the facial expressions are throughout mm -hmm. like even the weird eye you know i gotta <laughs> give points it's it's very distinct um so yeah general koi this whole time is like ah he's like freaking out because wolverine's here and he's like well i'm partners with the prince so the prince will protect me so like i'm not dealing with this i'm gonna go talk to broker and like hide behind Pin pinocchio and everyone's gonna go hide behind pinocchio basically um which is also really funny when you consider that like Wolverine is a prisoner at this point, technically. And yet they're, yeah, they haven't, the they're ruse prisoner. isn't gone yet. Yeah. So technically they're supposed to be prisoners, but general Koi is so afraid that he's like, I don't trust this. Uh, however, people do realize that this is a ruse when they ask for identification and this man just goes to shoot them, uh, which I feel like karma could have controlled that a little better, but I mean, all right. Uh, and then they just have a fight and they're like, well, we'll just run our way through this and fight people because we're cool with that. That's why they talked about it beforehand. That's why that's why you always talk about it before you go to attack um, a oh palace. Well, Green's eye in that upper panel. I had forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> He's got crazy eyes here. I just love it. Also, this pose like he's got his hands like this. Like, this is like staring at me. I don't appreciate it. <laughs> right through your soul. <laughs> oh my goodness. So they end up running down the hall and um, everyone's hiding out in this. I don't even know what this is. Like a, it looks like a subterranean layer under like the palace. Lab layer something. <laughs> Mad science lab, which of course no palace is complete without. And they're all literally hiding behind Pinocchio, um, which admittedly they did say they were going to do that. And then they General Koi finds out that they went to go talk to the prince, but the prince has already left. And the prince basically said, look, like I'm out. So like when you fix this, I'll be back and then we'll talk about it. Okay. <laughs> to just abandon him, which is honestly also a very Prince Baran move, by the way. 
that is exactly what he does. So I don't know why General Koi is surprised by this, but they get there and Pinocchio is activated. And it's time for the showdown, the re the rematch. <laughs> and Wolverine is once again looking through his claws. That's how you know it's about to go down. The ridge on his forehead's really weird in that one. <laughs> his claws are really weird yeah, here. No. Why are they so why are they so curved? <laughs> They're like really curved. They look more bone like than they normally do. And... They do. They do. I mean, maybe they should be this curved all the time. I don't know. So this is giving me a new per perspective on Wolverine, his forehead, his claws. Oh, and also Pinocchio also has that too. So I kind of like that they have that similarity, which mm -hmm. once again made me think when I was reading this, like, is there going to be some kind of like connection? No. <laughs> no. So they have this final fight. And during this final fight, Karma kind of like takes this opportunity to stand up to her uncle. Which is nice. It's a nice moment for Karma. This entire series, honestly, for Karma, she goes through a little arc. She gets a bit more confident in standing up for herself and using yeah. her powers, you know. Also, I feel like um, Karma is only used a few times, I believe, in this Wolverine series. And Joe Duffy is like one of the few people that actually like uses Karma. So it's pretty cool to have this moment and also knowing that like karma is this character that's kind of here but doesn't really get used a lot um in this series anyways so yeah they have this cool moment um and then during this fight we which... switched to pinocchio's perspective for the the first time ever <laughs> ever <laughs> and pinocchio seems to recognize target and he recognizes target as family and he, he also he references back taunt. to something else. Yeah, yeah the, the taunt taunts. from when he was a kid, where he says, where his cousin used to say to him all the time that he throwed like a that he threw, he like, threw a girl. like a girl. And his cousin was the only one who ever said that to him. That was like the whole joke. And so, of course, we've set up the uh, the super obvious reveal, which we seeded really late in the game. I mean, not unless you count naming the robot Pinocchio in the first place, but the seeding of who it was going to be was pretty late. Yes, into... the seeding of who it was going to be was pretty late. I don't know if that's something that was found along the way of writing the story or if it was something we knew from the beginning, but it just wasn't as like built as maybe as well as it could have been. I don't but, even uh, know if this was where they were going from the start of the story. It's just, you know what makes me think it has to be in some way? Why would you call a robot Pinocchio? Like, that's such a weird <laughs> name for a robot. It's just so, like, I remember in the first issue when they were like, oh, Pinocchio. I was like, why? <laughs> and then, basically, Dr. Page sees that this is happening and is like, I'm going to, like, eliminate all of the organic, like, materials so that Pinocchio won't remember anything. Which mm -hmm. also made me then wonder, like, Okay, so like, why did you even use a human What's to like the make advantage? a robot? Like, what, what was the is point? the advantage of the organic so you, material? You don't need the organic material, so you're just gonna wipe it. So then, why wouldn't? But then you can obviously build a whole robot. So why wouldn't you just build a robot and not even use a human? Robocop rules. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but like, we needed a brain to wire it because we didn't know how to wire it. So like, I don't know. Anyways, doesn't matter because Doctor Page gets smacked by Wolverine like an open hand. <laughs> <laughs> one of these <laughs> and she's down for the count oh there's also a great moment when wolverine comes in and he refers to her i think in his mind as like a sick old babe and i was like man i want to be a sick old babe that just sounds like such a cool way to refer to someone <laughs> oh my goodness uh rob we are going over the lazarus project we are on yes Issue 30 of Wolverine. Uh, Which is part four of the Lazarus Project. The final part, the conclusion. The conclusion of the Lazarus Project. Uh, so you've joined us at a great time. This is We're about to ask what the Lazarus Project is. So we'll be discussing yes. what it means in a moment. Uh, yeah, so they they are that's disrupted. Thank goodness. And... Wolverine is basically like, I, we got to kill this robot, you know? Even though I couldn't touch it before because of the what's it made of factor. Yeah, and now I've ripped a hole in it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not made of anything that we need to worry about, apparently. Um, 
But of course, Target is like, no, like, don't. It's if you kill him, it'll be murder because that's there's a human in there, which is a whole other issue that I have with the way that we treat robots in comics. But anyways, <laughs> don't there's a human in there. So that's that would be murder. I'm like, what about all the other robots that like are sentient or like are AI? And they're like, no, it's they don't fine. care about that. Kill them. They're fine. They're robots. Um, so Karma uses her powers to try to communicate with the robot. Uh, because it's a human, so she can do that. And she's able to kind of get the robot to realize, like, that it was once Target, a.k.a. Rick's cousin, or uh, Teddy's cousin, Rick. Um, and, yeah, they remember who each other is. They have this cute little moment where they recognize each other. But Dr. Page, you know, of course, she's got to get back up. And she's like, I'm going to override it. I'm going to wipe it. But uh, Wolverine is too fast. And <laughs> he deals with that really quickly. And she isn't even killed. And Karma is like kind of impressed by this. I'm not even dealing with Wolverine's eyes in his mask. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at that. Oh, my goodness. I'm but yeah, not Kar dealing with it. <laughs> Karma says, you knocked her out? I thought you would. And then Wolverine's like, kill her, Karma. Believe me, I was tempted. And then he's about to kill her uncle, but then she's like, no, don't kill my uncle either. And then she says a weird thing. Like, she has this great speech mm -hmm. where she's like, you better behave yourself, and I'm not going to be your, like, prisoner anymore and do what you say. And you suck. <laughs> but then she also basically says, you harm another innocent, anyone outside of Madripoor, and I will take your life in every sense of the word. Anyone outside of Madripoor being some key word. Well, I don't think she wants to upset the uh, the power vacuum. She doesn't want to create a power vacuum inside of Madripoor. She's like, look, you can That's hurt anyone in Madripoor. Be I, mean, I, I guess the implication there is that no one in Madripoor is innocent, I guess. But I'm just like, there's a lot of innocent people that live in Madripoor. I'm going to all the innocent people in Madripoor are like, what about us? Karma? Karma's like, look, <laughs> I can't protect everyone. Sorry, guys. I think it's her acknowledging that he's not going to change. I'm going to have to set some caveats on this or I'm killing yeah. him today. So Yeah, fair. So she she also makes sure her uncle is spared. And Wolverine is basically like, Karma will get, I mean, not Karma, but like, like he'll get his comeuppance because he's an evil guy. So eventually, I, that's how we always justify things as heroes when um, we have to let villains go, isn't it? One day, someone will do something about this, but it won't be me today. <laughs> uh, but he does try to go to deal with a uh, broker, but at that point, it uh, seems like everyone has killed themselves. But they haven't. And Wolverine doesn't bother to confirm this kill. But don't worry, because I don't think we ever see broker again. So <laughs> hopefully he learned from the error of his ways, whatever they were. Hold on. He's thinking about the master form. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this face. <laughs> Who's thinking about it? Uh, yeah, and we end it with on this note of, you know, Wolverine being like, you know, I've killed a lot of people, but at least I managed to save two kids. Two and a half, counting what's left inside the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because uh, the robot only counts as half a life. We don't know um, how much though. I I fell into this rabbit hole of thinking about how much of Rick is is in there. What does he remember? Like, does he now live with the fact that he is inside a robot? Yeah, why, I think so. Why did him being a good marksman qualify him for this in, in the first place? Um I don't know. <laughs> Wait, was he the good marksman or was his cousin the good marksman? Like no, because he he was because that's why they got separated because that was with the whole point of like the joke of like oh you throw like a girl but he didn't so like oh so it's like, just like oh so man. he's so good that he needs to be in the special program which is becoming a robot apparently apparently it's becoming a robot yeah I don't know I guess that's the upgrade you go from being a great marksman to now you're a robot I okay. guess here's the thing the master form had to be connected to the Lazarus Project. And here's why. In that last panel, which I have pulled up, they 
when he's talking about the Lazarus Project, he says, but the Lazarus Project has been stopped. People will stop chasing after the master form. Yes, yes. So it's, it puts the it Lazarus, together. That's, yeah, the master form and the Lazarus Project are connected. How are they connected? And But then he says also, and whatever they think it represents. Whatever they think it represents. <laughs> whatever is like, I don't know what it represents. You decide, the reader. You I also like how Wolverine says maybe like, you know, and now the people of Remica can like rest. Their souls can rest easier. And maybe there won't be any more Remicas because we stopped this. And I'm like, well, that's definitely not true. They didn't (laughs) stop it. It's still out there. But not just that. They they didn't they didn't deal with Remica at all in like any. uh, (laughs) Yeah. No, none of it was dealt with. But that's the end because it says Finn. So. <laughs> it's the fan. And and Say this is me. this is all we get for Joe. And then Joe Duffy is gone from Wolverine. Just gone. Okay. So what what was the Lazarus project? Also, <laughs> while we think about this, uh Rob is asking, who drew this? You ladies are great at finding out of the box issues. I don't even remember this. Uh this issue. Was so all of these issues are kind of drawn by different people for the most part. Uh, Bill J- Bill Yaska or Jaska is the person that drew this last issue, and the inks are by J- uh, Joe Rubenstein. But yeah, uh, Yaska spelled Y A A S K A. If you're looking it up, I have I don't think I've ever like I'm not familiar with his work, so this is what I know. And this is a lot. I but I like that it's a I do like that it's stylized. I I think that is cool. And that's what I like about it. I like it. I just don't think it works for Wolverine for the most part. I think for other yeah. characters it's working a lot better than but just on Wolverine specifically, because yeah. Wolverine has such a distinct look, he just looks off model a lot of the, oh, the time. Chem Dog is saying the late Bill Yaska. So rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I personally, I do like the style. I just, mm-hmm. yeah, I agree with you. I don't know if it fits for Wolverine, but it's cool. It's definitely cool for something, for sure. I'm sure he did a lot of cool stuff. No, because I like a lot of the expressions. Like you said, like lots of the action expressions. <laughs> Uptown Duck says it'd be perfect for Speedy tripping out. We that already was, have the was... perfect Speedy tripping out. <laughs> <laughs> we already saw that. It was beautiful. Um, but yeah, what is the Lazarus Project? Here's my theory. Okay, I, let's hear it. I think it's building robot soldiers. And I think the master form didn't do anything. And that it was just a tool that they used to disrupt places so that they re- could recruit soldiers into their army to turn into robots. So to like destabilize kind of, but then why leave it with the family? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Because they really, I don't know, maybe they were watching them play baseball in that neighborhood and they were like, these kids really are good at baseball. Like, they would be great <laughs> we could <use> soldiers. <laughs> you should put the thing here and then take these kids out of here. There's also the thing of, like, you do... Because I just think they put the master form in so many dangerous p- places that they can't actually want it to be protected. So, like, what happens if it actually gets destroyed? Like, would they care? Or maybe it's just indestructible. Maybe that's something. I don't know. What do you think? Okay. Projects. So so I think I'm going to go with what was presented in terms of the Lazarus project robot portion. So I think they were taking young malleable youths and using their brains to put into robots to create a hopefully malleable robot army, but suppressing them in some way. But I think the master form even though there's no evidence of this, but hear me out. I think the master form was somehow connected to a metal that was used to create the robot. That was what I was going for, that Mm -hmm. there was a secret inside of the master form. And the way it looked to me, even though they never hinted at, was that it was something that was malleable or could expand or there was more of it. Just It looked like it should do something. Just Mm -hmm. the way that it was shaped. Yeah, it does. It looks like it looks like an alien egg to me. That's what it looks. It like. does look like an alien egg. 
Like, but so it must have done something. But what did it do? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone have any theories about that? Yes, uh, I want to hear what do you think the Lazarus Ooh. What amazes me, though, is just that it never, it amazes me that you could go through all of this and just the way it's framed, it's framed as though it answered it. And that was what was the most amusing thing to me. When we get to the end, right. it's presented as we all know what the master form and the Lazarus project was, and we're glad that we stopped it. <laughs> we, we know what this is. Yeah, just this, the way it ends here on Wolverine, <laughs> this. And thank goodness we've saved the day again. It's like, <laughs> but what was it? Like this idea, whatever, whatever they think it represents. Whatever they <laughs> think it represents. That's the part that really gets me. Whatever. What do you mean, whatever? What do no, you it would have been cool if you placed it places because it needed to feed off of death energy or something. And so it was purposely placed places so that it had to have massacres in front of it and absorbed energy somehow, because then you could justify just leaving it someplace. Yeah. Cause then you could just go like, well, nobody's going to die here anymore because everybody's dead. So if we just leave it and nobody touches it, but then you should bury it or do something to like try and hide it. But like, that would be a way to explain why we were giving it to people who couldn't defend themselves, who were like doomed to die basically. I'm trying to I'm trying to come up with plausible yeah. explanations for plausible the master explanations form. for what the master form is. Yeah, I feel like I mean, here's the thing. It has to be something then that fits with the Lazarus project. But that's why I think you use it as like almost this distraction to like cast a net, you know? It's like you're using it as like bait for people. I see uh Chemdog has a theory. Chemdog does have a theory. Chemdog is saying the the broker was originally intended to be in the second Fallen Angel series. Maybe if that had come out, more about the, the Master Form would have been explained. This is true, because the second Fallen Angels series never happened, and it was supposed to happen with Joe Duffy, so she could have been trying to plant the seeds for something bigger. I definitely think this was supposed to lead to something bigger, and something got disrupted. I, I definitely agree with you there, Chemdog. I, I think I could also see that maybe Joe Duffy was supposed to do more Wolverine, and something happened. I don't know what happened, but something, I think, happened. But. Well, it's because there are elements of this that I really like. And that's what made this such a conflicting read. Because overall, there were parts of the Lazarus Project that I really enjoyed and thought were really solid. And then there were other parts that just never connected to anything were extremely frustrating. Yeah. Um, oh, my goodness. Someone said, interesting to see this in color after having read the black and white version. There's a black and white version of the Lazarus Project. Lawrence, please explain. Please expand on that for me. Um, Memento Mortem says, so the master form is just a fancy Fabergé egg that they get gullible kids slash people to protect to turn them into soldiers? Plausible. <laughs> it does sound like, like a government conspiracy to me, but I well, don't know. remember, whatever they think it represents. So <laughs> Whatever they think it represents? Uh, whatever they think it represents. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the master form was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> no, that was the Lazarus project. <laughs> mm, that was the Lazarus project. Uh, what if the Lazarus project was the first concept for the human slash sentinel program? Ooh. I like that as an idea. I do too. I, because you need to give a reason for why we're using human brains inside of the, the robots. I also, I also wish they'd gone back to the material it was made of because the fact that it specifically could... That was cool. off Wolverine was interesting. Yeah. The idea that he was like, what? I can't really like damage this thing. That's weird. And then they were just like, we'll never mention that again. Also, what do you think? Could Wolverine be a cyborg? I'm like, I don't think so, but maybe, I don't know. Um, maybe the master form would have made the next form of unobtainium besides adamantium. Uh, made of the next form, I'm assuming you mean. Yeah, I think the master form could have been made. Maybe the master form was used in the materials that we needed or something like it can produce. Like it has That's what I was thinking, that it was yeah. something that could improve the robots in some way. Yeah, I, uh, I But then don't the know. only thing there is why are we leaving it to be guarded places instead of having it with the program? I don't know. Oh, in Marvel Masterworks, it was in black and white, collecting the whole run from the first issue. Nice. Yeah, I don't have the Masterworks for this one. I have the Masterworks for Dazzler, but those are my 
masterworks currently. I do want to get all the masterworks for uh, this run or however many we have so far. Um, Chemdog says Marvel did a series black and white phone book size reprints. Sounds like that's could be the masterworks. <clears throat> yeah, I have some of those for DC. They did them for some of the um, less like known runs, like some of the obscure Brave and the Bolds and stuff like that. Oh, I love that. That sounds awesome. Um, it is the master of forms, says David, and they used it to form mind to work in a robot. And if they knew they could get it again, so they removed a wasted soul slash human, the power source. Whoa. This is getting so like a supernatural fancy. kind of, we don't know how to actually put a mind into a robot. We need to use this kind the of maybe supernatural form. or alien tech or something to it make would the transfer. It would really be weird though that, like here's the thing that doesn't make any sense for any, I think of our theories, almost. Maybe mine, it still kind of works. Why would you leave it? it's 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 two facts it's the fact that he leaves it and the fact that they accept that he left it and decide that they should not pursue it yeah that so... everyone's just like good idea let's not go back i get that <laughs> and and it's just like the fact that well i mean i understand maybe wolverine leaving it because of everything he just went through and he doesn't know what it does right yeah he's like everybody wants it but like it's just a faberge egg i don't care about this <laughs> Um, these people are more important. That that makes sense for Wolverine. But the fact that the people that are supposed to be using it for the Lazarus Project said, yeah, we're cool with leaving that and we don't think we should actually go back and get it. Because what if they make the connection between us and... <laughs> what if they make the connection? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, what if they make that connection? Who's so, going to make the connection? That's the other question, I guess. So overall, how did you find this? Um, memorable. <laughs> that's that's the main thing. You know, going back to it, I was just thinking of like how much this story has stuck with me. There's another Wolverine story that's really weird from this era that has mm -hmm. also stuck with me. That's also just like goes all over the place. And I was like. As I was reading this, I was thinking about it. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, I think some of my favorite stories are the ones where it's not perfect, but mm. there's lots of cool stuff happening that almost the fact that it isn't perfect makes it just sit better with me, especially mm. in the fact that the characters, I think, are really well represented throughout it. Yeah. So. It's like, you can tell me any story, but like, if you're writing Wolverine right, and like, it's good in that regard, then I will go back and read that story, probably. <laughs> Even, especially if it's kind of like janky. What do you think? Um, I'm still feeling through it. I'm still feeling through how still I feel about it. it. Mm -hmm. I, overall... I enjoyed reading it and I thought it was interesting, but I'm not sure for me overall, if it was strange enough to stick with me long-term right. because the, the pacing and those things and the fact that we never find out what it is, is definitely something very memorable about it. But overall, I'm not sure if it would stick with me long-term in the same way, but there are elements of it that I really, really liked. And of all the issues, even though it's one of the most uneven, I think 28 is the one that I'll probably remember the most aside from 29's um, aside from 29's cover, but 28, just like some of those scenes were so visceral and the like that that's probably what will come to my mind first. When I think about the Lazarus project, this poor like Jan dying to protect the master form that we never find out whatever what it represents, does. you know? Yeah. I mean, I think 28 is definitely the most haunting in terms of like the imagery. Yeah. And I feel like for me, usually when I'm recalling something, there's a panel or something that kind of sticks in my mind that is just the key panel for an issue that is what is conjured. Yeah. And I think for me, it's those two, those two sharp shows like bullseye shots just really, really stick with me along with also in um 29, the firework of them mm. sitting by the fire also. Sticks yeah. With me. So there are some memorable moments that I think. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely like some really nice imagery. For me, a lot of the times too, it's it's the imagery 
it's also just like moments and what people say like even in that first issue a lot of the mm -hmm. interactions between the characters like a lot of the stuff between jess and like logan and they're like chatting is just something that sticks with me and it's like a moment i always come back to i just feel like it's really good banter mm -hmm. and like the moment where wolverine goes up and he just says like avon calling like that will so stay cheesy. with me forever <laughs> it's so cheesy um serenity is saying after some quick internet sleuthing it was supposed to be part of the second fallen angel series and have its origin there someone has to call joe duffy so she can spill the tea 100 percent. i tried um, to look it up oh <laughs> it's tempting like do you think she ever gets emails or so, people just asking so what was what happened with her <laughs> so tell tell me what is the master form really just yeah i would love to ask line. her the subject I mean, line is just Project Lazarus. <laughs> I can definitely try to look up Joe Duffy and I'll see what I can find out for everyone. And if I get the secret of the master form and Joe Duffy gives me her blessing to share it with you all, I will <laughs> do that because I don't know. I feel like a lot of comic book writers, though, I, I mm -hmm. do feel like when I reach out to people, the odds are really good that people will get back to you. Like, especially if you're someone that like talks about comics and that's like one of your. No, it's true. People it's true. And it's, a lot of people yeah, I yeah. found are really excited to talk about, you know, projects and ideas that they've had. And they can be really interesting conversations. I'd love to just be like, what was it like when you were working at Marvel this time and you were writing this Wolverine story? And like, what was that like for you? And like, what were your ideas going into this? And like, did it go where you wanted it to go? Mm -hmm. Did it not? And how did the fact that the second volume of Fallen Angels not happen sort of like make you feel like if this was supposed to lead into that? Or like, what mm -hmm. was that going to look like? I it's so interesting to find out the the paths we didn't go down sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, Lane is saying, so does Amanda like flat slash punchline too? Uh, I really like punchline. I don't really like know. Flatline is... Um, you don't know enough about flatline? <laughs> I, I know a little bit. I know a little bit, but I haven't really been following like a lot of like what Damien's or... Yeah, Damien, yeah from Damien like the, the ninja. Right? Yeah, the ninja fight arc. The ninja fight arc. <laughs> She's I got the death good. touch. The death she was touch, um yeah. Lord Deathman's apprentice. <laughs> I feel like I actually have a question for you. Where is Punchline at right now? Is she doing anything? Is she where'd she go? Not Someone was asking really. me this the other day, and I was like, I don't know. She's uh floating in the nether space until someone mm -hmm. really decides to do something with her. And I will the funniest thing happens to me. I uh you know on YouTube, you gotta give a YouTube title. Yeah. Uh, for your videos and I always title my punchline one something along the lines of the problem with punchline or punchlines back and she's worse than ever and, or something really catchy like that but it's because she's a villain or because like they're doing weird stuff with her editorially right. but so because of that people who don't watch my videos I have a reputation that like I hate her and I'm obsessed and triggered and what? so I know every, you like punchline so <laughs> every time the why are you so obsessed with her they get over it She's here to you're stay, like, and I'm like, this is really funny. You're like, clearly you haven't watched the video. You've just seen the title. Which... I think she has potential. I I really, and I genuinely think that. And yeah, she's, I... one, she's one solid storyline away. I will maintain this from, from really landing. I really like Punchline, and I like the potential as well of what she could represent. I think Alexis is a really cool idea for a character. I really love her character design as well. I do too. Um, you know, it you know what it reminds me of when like were were we working together at the time when like all of that started happening with Punchline and Ghostmaker? I feel like we had a conversation about we had that. a conversation. I don't, I don't know if we were working together. That. I think we were just chatting about yeah. it, but yeah, I think I was talking about Ghostmaker as well. And I was talking about how initially I really didn't like Ghostmaker. Um, and then I read all the backup stories. And like Ghostmaker is a character that I, when I do talk to people about him, they're like, oh, like a man, a Ghostmaker so dumb. And I'm like, I hear you. And like, I feel I was you. And then I read more about him. And <laughs> I really like him. I think he's actually really interesting. And I do think he has a cool design. And I just wish that... Like, he's also one of those characters where I'm just like, I we just need a little more and he could go somewhere. It's, and I feel like that about Punchline, too. It's because I feel ta like when Tanyan left and so many of those were his and not everybody yeah. picked up the threads from them. Some people tried with Punchline, but I feel that Punchline got moved off of her base too quickly. I feel like we needed to build more up to where we were going with her before trying to throw her right out the gate like that and so now you kind of got to 
pull back a bit and figure yeah. out what you're doing because we did like hit it so hard at first because the design was popping and people were interested and yeah, yeah, I mean, I I feel like, yeah, a clown hunter, Chem Dog is also calling out. Yeah, clown hunter is another one that kind of fell by the wayside. I'm not as big of a clown hunter fan, but I mean, like a lot of these characters, I would say, I think all have this potential to go somewhere and be really cool. Like, same with Molly as well. Although I Miracle think they did Molly? some weird, yeah, Miracle yeah. Molly. They did some weird things with Miracle Molly, though. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. But um, yeah. I, I don't know. I just want to see the characters come back and have good stories. That's that's my dream for them, mm -hmm. for all these characters. But I think we have to wait, like, maybe till Tinian comes back and does some more stuff. Um, or until somebody, like, figures out a way to do something with her, has a good pitch, or they somebody comes up with a really awesome variant and they feel like to do something with it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Someone will come back eventually. Um, we should talk about a little bit of X-Men 97 before yes. we sign off. I want to yes, talk we about should. it. <laughs> um, also, uh, what was this? Someone said something in chat and I wanted to respond to it. I don't know if I can find it, but, um, yeah. What did you guys all think of X-Men 97? I watched your video and mm. I loved pretty much everything that you said about it. Also, I think you and I might be the only people that are here for the rogue Magneto romance. I felt so alone when I saw the uh, the comments. A lot of people were like, it's disgusting. Why is it happening? I know. I don't want... I Even in comics, I find it interesting. They've played with it more than in the Savage Land arc. There have been a couple of alternate realities where they're together, have children, all of that kind of jazz. They play within the Exiles with one of their children, Age of Apocalypse. Just a whole bunch of Joseph clone shenanigans. Just all of those kind of things. I think it's interesting. I genuinely think it's interesting. And while I like Rogue and Gambit, I like playing with the different dynamics and seeing it's just such a different type of relationship. And I yeah. find it interesting. That's exactly like when you said that in your video, I was just like, um, yes, finally someone <laughs> that gets it. Because to me, and I mean, this is kind of the thing that I also feel about like what happened with Storm, right? Because mm. also friends, I guess I should have said fair warning. I'm sorry. We're going to talk spoilers. about X-Men 97 spoilers. Um, <laughs> these are all spoilers, but um, I'm assuming everyone, I'm assuming a lot of you guys have watched it, but if you haven't watched it and you don't want it to be spoiled for you, I totally understand. Uh, but we're going to talk about it anyways. Uh, so that's the same thing that kind of is going on with Storm. And I think a lot of people were upset about that. And I totally get it. But I'm just like, we're disrupting the status quo so that we can build some really like cool and dramatic stories. And for me, a huge thing, a big reason of why I love X-Men is because it is a soap opera, right? Like it mm -hmm. is high drama. And so we can't have Rogue and Gambit be like together, like right it's off perfect. the bat. And it's perfect. <laughs> like, and I also just love that the disruption is coming from rogue side of the relationship as opposed to Gambit side, because usually it's like mostly Gambit, mm -hmm. like Gambit's like, oh, I can't touch rogue. Like, oh, woe is me. And I'm just like, oh, shut up, Gambit. <laughs> and so at least this time I'm like, rogue is like, oh, my gosh, this person I can be with. And like, yeah, we like had a romance and like, I know he's evil, but he's also kind of great. And I'm like. <laughs> I mean, all of these things are true. Magneto is evil, but he's also kind of great. And he it's, is hot. And so is Rogue. And they can touch <laughs> each other. Like, it makes it's sense. It's also hinting at the idea of them thematically, which I understand, which is the mm -hmm. idea that you can be redeemed. You can change. The, just depending yeah. upon where yeah. you start, you can change. And there's something about Both the idea. Both of them that, have that. They connect yes. on that level. And it's also not even just for what's going on with Rogue and Gambit, which I like it for that because it disrupts it, which means when we come back to it, it's going to be even bigger. And I say mm. this Rogue and Gambit fan. I do ship them like hard. Mm. But I like that because I think then when they come back together, they're going to be stronger than ever, which I like. Mm -hmm. And I also feel like um, for Magneto, it's interesting because Magneto is coming into this group, like having a very outside dynamic. So it gives him like a little way in Mm -hmm. by, by building a really personal connection with a member of the team. And I was like, yes, this is like giving something for Magneto. This is giving something for Rogue. This is giving something for Gambit. This is 
like intro. and that's what i liked about all the things that were introduced was that they were opening storylines they yeah they're like opening with, doors everywhere they presented you with directions you could go in they weren't yeah. the kind of things that closed it off there we could now move in many different directions and that's interesting it's exciting and it makes you go like i wonder what'll happen and mm -hmm. the fact i think the fact though that there's so many people that are like oh my gosh did you see this is happening oh i don't know how i feel about that i'm like the fact that we're all having these conversations is like a good sign i think <laughs> also overall well, because these are good types of conversations to have, like just those nerdy fan conversations. And I love that. Yeah. Uh, Lane is saying, I think uh, we'll be okay with, Ro I will be okay with Rogue and Magneto if it's not the end game. If they did that all the way, I think people would dislike it. Yeah. Lane, I don't think it'll be the end game. I no. feel like if it's the end game, a lot of us are going to be, we'll all be there together. That would be a choice. <laughs> that would be a very, that would be a very, Granted, I don't know. It would really depend on how they do it, um, I think. Because, like, is there a reality where I would like that? Yes, it's called Age of Apocalypse. Yeah, I did like it in Age of Apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, I did like it in Age of Apocalypse. So, But, I mean, that's because of how it's handled and who those characters are. They're kind of different in Age of Apocalypse. So, I don't know if it works in 90s animated, but... <laughs> You know, we'll have to wait and see. I don't think they'll go all the way with it, though. If they did, I'd be very surprised. Uh, Comic Toby said this earlier. I was surprised this year when Amanda became a full-time YouTuber. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Comic Toby. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been a full-time YouTuber since I've been working on Top 10 Nerd. I just haven't been doing my own thing. But just, it has been great. But also, just know that because I'm also still doing Nerd and I'm doing this and I'm streaming and doing a lot of things. I'm very tired. That's what yeah, I was saying. It's a lot. You're balancing <laughs> a lot of different things. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, just wait until Rogue walks in to catch Magneto and Gambit kissing. Oh my gosh. I would love that. <laughs> Gambit's too angry about this. <laughs> yeah, but maybe, maybe like it'll be an angry kiss. I don't think that'll happen. I think, you know what, if anything, I think Professor X might come back and he might steal Magneto away from Rogue <laughs> after all the talk of how much that part where Magneto was like, Charles was always in my mind, not in like a bad way. Yeah. Just like there, we, just resting like a, just like a resting. presence. Cause we loved each other. I was like, it's so fascinating how the idea has evolved this. over time because I recently did the Enter Magneto video and in that I talked about some of the evolution of Magneto and how that wasn't an element to their relationship, their friendship until later on. And since it was introduced, it's just become bigger and bigger. And I think it's one of the strong, one, a strong addition to them. And that's the thing with, all, that's the interesting thing about reading the X-Men is lots of the evolutions over time have just added to them. And they just yeah. become deeper and richer over time from those additions. And it's really cool to look back and see that when these came in and now they're just core elements. And that's really cool. I would say that uh, that's also a video. If you guys haven't gone and watched um, Sasha's video on Magneto, it's really, really good. I also oh, watched nice. that video. Um, uh, links are in the chat, by the way, and also in the video description. Uh, by the way, if you guys aren't already following Casually Comics, although I know a lot of the people over here are i think and if you're not what are you doing with your life <laughs> but we, like the one thing that you were talking about too about this like add-on in the animated series and i love it because i just went back and watched this like last week mm -hmm. the idea that they were like psychologists together <laughs> is like one of my favorite weird backstories for <laughs> magneto and xavier like we were psychologists together and we had to deal with all these problems but then like magneto went off the rails i was like oh my gosh Yes. I just really like that in the comic when they meet and one of the ways that cues him in is that he can't read his mind. And yeah. I just think that that's interesting because it sets up a dynamic right away that's unique for the two of them. So the idea that he can just rest in Eric's mind is a bit of a, <laughs> <laughs> a pivot. It's weird. From that, but it's a pivot. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> he was always in my mind, Charles. That's how I like it. I like him in my mind. It's what I like. I mean, also, I just keep thinking of like, what would Magneto be like as a therapist? Like, that's got to be. I don't know. I don't Pull know. yourself up by your bootstraps. Figure it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Magneto's like, look, this person that's not being nice to you. Have you ever thought about like, just what if you just like get some powers and like kill them? Like, what, what if you, you just crush your enemies? Have you ever thought about that? <laughs> yeah, crush your enemies. <laughs> That'll really solve your problems. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, Serenity saying the boys that doctor together, doctor together. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Uh, Uptown Duck says people? the advice is to become Zorn. But yes, he was not Zorn. Zorn. <laughs> we all... <laughs> he was Zorn, but he wasn't. <laughs> he was Zorn. He's Zorn, but he's also not Zorn yet. He wasn't. His Zorn, advice would be <laughs> first become Zorn, and then pretend that that never happened, and don't exactly. actually be Zorn. Whatever you do, you better not. Oh my <sighs> gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I really liked the first two episodes, and I'm excited to see where it goes. I don't think it's. I don't think it's perfect, but I do think it's just perfect in terms of the tone. What I much. really enjoyed was seeing people have the same reaction I did when I was young, which is, oh, I want to check out the X-Men. And I just thought that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, when it makes I, people want to read. That's my thing. Like, what more can you ask for is if people think these characters are cool. And I saw it with, um, like I said, to a commenter. My daughter had never seen X-Men. And now right. she just thinks that Wolverine is the bee's knees. She's a traitor. So <laughs> <laughs> she's a traitor. Are you not a Wolverine fan? Not overly, not as much as like the hype for him at oh, his peak okay. for sure. I, okay. I was a Cyclops person, but <laughs> right. I mean, I like Psych too. Uh, I feel I, like I, I like, like Wolverine. Wolverine more, but it's just he's overexposed in my he opinion. And I get it though, because like people love him. He moves books. They want to see him. So I a hundred percent get it, but people will, will often ask like, you know, what's your favorite, like X-Men, what's your favorite mutant? And I'll be like, I mean, I hate to say Wolverine because it's such a typical, but you pick. feel basic. <laughs> I, yeah, I feel so basic. And I mean, obviously I love a lot of other mutants. Like sometimes like last time I was listing off people. I like people were like Dazzler. And I was like, Oh yeah, I do love Dazzler. Like that's a great pick for me. That's a, that's a way better pick Dazzler, but I do love Wolverine. And he is usually when someone asks me that, like one of the first people that comes into my mind, just cause I love him so much, mm -hmm. but it is very basic. You know, I think like, he's inherently cool. My he daughter won't here. stop asking questions like his claws, like how do they work? They come out. Like, <laughs> does that hurt? Why does he do that? And you're like, what about Scott? What do you think of him? Do you want to yeah. ask some questions about Scott? <laughs> She's like, no, <laughs> not, not a fan. I think Scott is so good. Okay. How do you feel about Scott and Jean and Scott seeming like he's leaning right back into being Scott again? Like that whole part where he, where they're talking to Magneto when he comes in and he's like, look, like I'm going to be taking over the X-Men now. It is what it is. Like get used to it. <laughs> and then Scott's like, I don't accept this. I can't believe that this is a thing. And he's like, Gene, read his mind. Gene, read his mind. <laughs> and he's like, look, that's not how it works, Scott. Like, like Gene's trying to explain, like, even if I read his mind, like that's not really going to resolve anything here. And he's like, well, read, read his mind every minute All of the every time, day. constantly. <laughs> Gene's like, I don't know if I want to do that, Scott. He's like, you, you'll you do it. You're going to do it. I was like, uh, Scott, like this woman is about to have a baby. Like, I need you to turn it down. But I was also like, this is giving me so much like classic. It is. That's history. my thing. It was. I'm like, oh, jerk Cyclops. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> it's entered the chat. But, you know, in a way that it's not coming from a place like the thing I like about Scott being a jerk is that I don't think Scott is ever like a jerk for his own. Well, in the most in most cases, I don't think he's really a jerk for his own self game. Scott like, has some character flaws that he, he does. lead towards jerk tendencies that he needs to fight to overcome. And that's one of the things I enjoy about him. He's flawed. He's very flawed. I feel like Wolverine has like his animalistic nature and Scott has his jerkiness. Like <laughs> That's their like that's their version of their dark side in a way. Um, but I think Scott's is more interesting in terms of that it's like more nuanced. And a lot of the times that it comes from more interesting places that are about his life and his childhood. And mm -hmm. Scott's got a lot of trauma. Scott needs Scott should go ask Magneto for therapy. That's what I think. <laughs> maybe Magneto could help. No, him out. then we're just gonna end up in the crush your enemies. <laughs> He's like, Scott, crush your enemies. And Scott's like, all right. Just blasts him. <laughs> Emma Frost has entered the chat. <laughs> oh, man. Another weird concept, actually, of Scott in the comics is just the idea of, like, Emma Frost kind of also acting as Scott's therapist at times. And I'm like, isn't that kind of messed up? I really enjoy Emma and Scott. I feel I'm in the minority in that regard. I am a big Emma and Scott person. I feel like it makes sense. 
I like I, Emma and Scott together. Don't get me wrong. They I'm matched definitely... in a way, I feel like, in certain, especially during that arc in terms of their decisiveness and at times ruthlessness when that was going on. It, to me, it it matched because Gene and him balance each other in a very different way. Gene yes. helps to balance him and humanize him and bring some of that more the word isn't softness, but just round him out a little bit when he's going off the rails. Whereas Emma sharpened him in a very interesting way. That I think has... Emma's the type of person, she's very focused on like, this is what I want and this is what I see as being the best thing and I'm just going to go for it, you know? And Jean mm -hmm. is very much more of a person, like I really see her as more of a person that she's like, let's look at everybody's perspectives on mm -hmm. this. Like she wants to provide you perspective. Emma wants you to, to help you focus on your own perspective. So you can see like where you're at and then be and like, you it. go for that, baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's definitely two different focuses for Scott. I think both are good in different ways. They're both really interesting. Really, I just think, I mean, I am I feel like Scott could be with Emma and Jean and I'd be fine with that as well. <laughs> I'd be fine with Jean and Emma being together too. I think that could be interesting. I don't know if that'll ever happen. That's a dream for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dream I have. Why not? Why not everybody just get in? That's what I say. <laughs> everyone, all the X Men, get on here. I'm I'm very much you know pro the everyone on the island. You know, make more mutants. I'm like, yep, <laughs> I think that's great. But I think it's going to be really interesting in this series because I do think Gene and Scott. I mean, Gene and Scott are definitely going to have some issues. Yes, a hundred percent. Considering we have another Gene that has entered the chat. Do you think um, they'll mention the ocean? One of my favorite in quotes. Oh, <laughs> the ocean. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't know where we're going to go with this next thing. Who do you think? Okay, do you think one of them is Maddie? And if one of them is Maddie, who's Maddie? Okay, so we're obviously in spoiler territory. This I, is major spoiler territory, everyone. <laughs> I like the idea that the gene we've been following is Maddie. Because the child is Nathan. And... So I, I'm intrigued by going that route. If we, if we go for that, it also opens up some very interesting avenues for Logan and his unresolved feelings that are floating around there because yep. whoever it is, I think there's more unresolved issues on the gene front. If Madeline is, is pregnant gene, because right. then it's all Cyclops. Like, how would, because how would you get over that? Because everybody likes to believe that the person you love would notice. And that would, if that's the way we're going, that would be so painful that, you know, that also, that's just yeah. a really weird, bizarre, unrealistic fear of mine that I'd be cloned one day and no one would notice. And <laughs> I am so scared of that idea. I think that, I think that works in the sense that it is. Well, it's very sinister. I'll tell yes. you that. That's a very sinister plot move. And I think it also definitely would disrupt like a lot of things, which could be really interesting. But I personally think that Maddie is the one that's coming in. Mm -hmm. Because I just think, is it too much to go that way? And I also like the idea of Jean actually getting to be Nathan's mom. But everyone is saying because it's not baby Rachel that like it has to be maddie but i'm like mm. i don't think it has to be because this is also a series that like just picks Plays a bunch of things. things and yeah mixes it up I, I also like the fact that like we really don't know and i mean maybe it'll become more obvious when we watch like more of the show and we'll mm -hmm. have more hints as comic readers but i will really love it if they keep us guessing till the last possible second so that and then when they reveal it so many of us are surprised just in general, like, we're like, wow, mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting that. Because this whole first two episodes has been that for me, including the ending mm -hmm. with Jean, Maddie, someone showing up at the door and me being like, wait, what? <laughs> and I mean, who knows? Maybe it will be the ocean. Maybe she'll be like, I've just been in the ocean. <laughs> I was in a what cocoon under this, the ocean. Who's this woman? <laughs> Why is she pregnant? Scott, what happened? What did you do? <laughs> oh, boy. Scott's going to be in real. I thought Scott was in trouble. In these episodes, if that's what happens, Scott's going to be in big trouble. <laughs> oh, boy. Inferno is coming, says Comics Testing. Yes, Inferno, it's coming. It's coming. Lane is. Uh, Lane also added me and said, I think you would have a better chance of Mary Jane Watson and Black Cat getting together than <laughs> Jean and Emma. I mean... You're not wrong. I mean, I definitely, I've read the team ups with MJ and Black Cat. I love them together. I'm also down for that. Take Peter out of the equation. Just you two. 
just be together. Oh, come on. You know, Peter and his poor Parker luck. I need to give him something. <laughs> <laughs> no, Peter gets nothing. Sorry, Peter. <laughs> you don't get anything. Peter, just go cry over Paul some more. That's what I say. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I actually really want MJ and Peter to get married again, but I'm not holding out hope. I, I'm I'm in a I'm in a slump. I'm I'm depressed <laughs> over it. It's fine. We don't talk about Spider Man in this house. It's depressing right now. Sorry, Zeb. I love you. What about Pardon? Ultimate Spider Man? Yeah. Oh, we'll talk about Ultimate Spider Man. Ultimate Spider Man is great. Yeah. I uh, I haven't read it, but I've been hearing amazing things about it. Uh, have you read Ultimate X Men? Not yet, but I need to hop on it, especially because I did the um, those videos. People have been requesting it. They're like, "Come on, do it, do it, do it," and I'm like, "I should." I really should. What I read, and I'm so sad because I had it in this room and then it left, was I spent the last week or so reading all of um, Rick Remender's Low. And so I want to do an overview of that. And then Tokyo Ghost showed up. Well, part of it showed up today. And I was very sad because I ordered it from the same place, volumes one and two. And I saw one package and I was like, I know what this is going to be. This is going to be volume two. And I opened it and it was. Well, there you go. All right. Well, yeah, I'm I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on Ultimate X-Men. I also uh, have the first issue of Ultimate Black Panther, which I kind of skimmed a little while ago, mm -hmm. and I'm excited to go back and read that because that also looks really good. Basically, mm -hmm. like Ultimate, this new Ultimate line, I'm just like, is so promising. And I really hope it continues to like just wow all of us. Um, <laughs> Uptown Duck is suggesting that Morph was pregnant Jean all along. <laughs> I like that idea. That sounds so wacky. Sure. Let's do that. <laughs> and then at the same time, Rob is like, don't mention more, please. That was so awkward. Uh, Rob, this is what I'm going to say to you. Um, I like Morf, that scene. I Morf like this. turned too. into Jean before. And uh, I think maybe even kissed Logan in the previous series, didn't he? I, I'm trying to recall because I'm in the middle of a rewatch. But that was something Morph did a lot just take forms and mess with people i, I love he, when morph walks into the kitchen as xavier yeah. i love morph <laughs> loves messing with people morph's favorite thing is to mess with people and oh okay yeah this is the argument that's been happening in the comments of my video Ooh, did people say bestie in the 90s some people are saying they did some people are saying they didn't now i do not recall this happening but i may just not have been in the circle where they said it so. i don't remember it happening either. I'm in your camp of the idea of when you were talking about the 2010s lingo slipping in. Mm -hmm. I think that that may have just been a slip. But also, I mean, I will say in the 90s, I was a kid. Yeah, I was a kid. I was a kid, but too. Like, we were, we were young. We were children in the 90s. My thing is, I just, I wonder if it's one of those things where the way that it's come about in that current vernacular it just feels different I don't, there's just something about it that felt weird to me it just it mm. didn't feel of the time and I was wondering I had one of those moments where I was wondering even if it was said in some corners is this one of those things where the perception of the 90s is different from the actual 90s and we need to work with the perception like how people look at 80s clothes or those kind of things whereas there is way more variety than maybe. actually was in the time period because to me it just felt jarring but maybe it was supposed to maybe I'm just supposed to find of jubilee slang jar <laughs> maybe it was jarring or maybe in the 90s that was a thing people said or maybe like i mean okay so here's what some people are saying uh we have count Juan is saying i don't either so don't remember that uh comics testing says only in wisconsin <laughs> um amusing streamer says i was a teenager what an idiot i was <laughs> all right um yeah i don't know i i i i don't know oh lane this is a good point lane this was a whole point that we talked about in my when we okay. I, I have a i have a theory about this yeah i think that the just the i think that the general public thinks he's dead like that's why they have a death certificate because they have to declare him dead like if everybody thinks he's dead i don't think the general public knows that he went off to space i think the x-men do because they say he's like he's not here they don't say he's dead like so i think he physically is dead but that well, his mind went because it looked like his like brain juice got zapped up i went back and watched the ending I did and too. it's confusing <laughs> well because what's happening he, there he says he can't return in like physical i'm like you will and i know you will like it's fine but <laughs> well here's my theory i think he's gonna go with the shiar and i think when he does come back mm -hmm. he will come back as like I think he's going to like be walking and stuff. That's what I think.
Are or you he's going to come back with the exo suit, which I'd love. Are so you predicting I'm onslaught at any point? Ooh, onslaught. Mm, I don't see that happening right now, but I would love <laughs> to see onslaught. I would really love that. I mean, I don't know because if, if, if Charles comes back and maybe Magneto is doing some stuff he doesn't like, and maybe onslaught comes out of that. That's what there I was a moment that made me feel onslaughty. And what it was, was it? it was the way that they had the ripples coming out of um, Eric's forehead. And mm. I was just like, it just, it, it jarred me a little bit. Because I've been re-watching, like, they come out of his hands. And, like, he mentally uses his powers all the time. But I was struggling to find scenes where they come out of his head like that. Granted, I'm not too deep into my rewatch. I'm not going to trust, like, my, it's been, like, maybe five years since my last one. But to me, it just made me think of that. And I was just thinking about Onslaught because I'm like, we're moving up in eras and we've adapted a lot of things and we're still adapting them at that breakneck pace that the 90s did. Hmm. So I'm just intrigued by the idea. I I have, I have no doubt that Charles will be back. I don't think they're ignoring the ending. I think they're not mentioning like, oh, he went off into space, but they haven't really recapped a lot of things. They're very much treating it like a, you know, what's going on bam continuation but there's some things they're ignoring because magneto and rogue didn't have a thing in like the last well i know. think well here's my theory about that i think there's going to be some things that we're going to go back to throughout the series and they're going to fill in the gaps mm -hmm. so i think that's a lot of people and like i get i get that it's confusing so like 100 percent, i get that mm -hmm. but i also feel like there's a lot of people that are like what is this it makes no sense it'll never make any sense why would they do that and i'm like well, let's not uh, you know, overreact. Like, it doesn't make... Maybe we don't understand it right now. But I think they're going to explain some of these things and then go, like... Well, that's remember, the thing about serialized storytelling. Remember that, the Savage Lands. Yes. <laughs> I'm for that. Everybody's clothes were torn. But that's the thing with That's where we're getting the booty shot. That's definitely where they're they better put it. it for Savage Lands. <laughs> well, with oh, serialized boy. storytelling, it's you have to let it unfold. And that's the thing with living in the digital age is reactions can happen so quickly and lots of times stories don't get a chance to breathe because the reactions are so lightning fast and i feel like you need to yes of course have the reaction everybody has them but also just give the story some space it might be working up to something it, it yeah. might it might be good it might be bad but you know especially with the types of stories that the x-men tell like you know that you can even see the titles they're leading up to a three-part like part arc at the end so yeah. It's good. We're going to be going to some places. So I think some of that stuff will be filled in. Like I'm, a, I think we're going to get some sort of Magneto rogue backstory that'll be mm -hmm. integrated in somewhere. Um, I think we're probably going to also get more about what's going on with Bishop and, and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. A lot of people were confused about that. A lot of people were like, how can Bishop be on the X-Men? And I'm like, well, Bishop was with, that's a thing that happened. I don't really remember all of it. I have to go back and rewatch that. But I think he was around, but I don't know about him being on the team. I saw some people saying they wished it was Forge, but well, I, I feel we, like I think we might be getting Forge. I think we're going to get Forge. Yeah, like, I, I think we are. I think Forge might be on the team soon because <laughs> I think we're going to get uh, Duck was theorizing that we're going to get uh, Dylan was theorizing mm -hmm. that we're going to get um, the Forge Storm romance, which yeah. That's what I thought when I saw her leaving like that. I was like, is this, is this where I wanted going? to go to Wakanda? <laughs> I was like, I was like storm and black Panther. And everyone's like, why are you jumping to that conclusion? I'm like, cause that's where she goes. And she like taps into her, her goddess vibes fully. And it's great. And everyone was like, I think probably it'll be forged though. No. And I was like, oh yeah, that also makes sense. <laughs> I was like, well, I like forge and storm too. But I was like, but what about T'Challa? <laughs> What about Black Panther? And they're like, Black Panther's not a mutant. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I just want her to be queen. You're of like, Wakanda. let me have this. Let me have this. Let her go become a goddess and become queen of Wakanda. Let me live through this series because I know it's not gonna happen again anytime soon in the comments. <laughs> and I'm just I'm just sitting like mourning every time I read them or see them together. And they're like, Oh, remember when we were like married and happy? And I'm like, I remember this moment. <laughs> I miss it so much. Maybe one day. Uh, okay. We should probably, I should probably let you go. You probably want to like sleep. <laughs> stuff. I feel like I could talk to you about X-Men all night. I'm, I will never stop talking. 
if I don't, we'll definitely you go, need then. to do it again. We'll need to come together for more storylines, more weird storylines. This Maybe will be what we'll we talk about. It'll just only ever be. I hope we just keep doing this. Like, what are they talking about this time? Another weird, random storyline. <laughs> Maybe at some point we'll know what the Lazarus project was. So. Maybe. Maybe Joe Duffy will come back and, and write the story, you know. People still want that Fallen Angels series. People, when Fallen Angels even came back, and that was a weird that was a weird revisit, but people even, I remember people being like, but what about Fallen Angels, Amanda? And I was like, guys, that's the one that, like, no one likes. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but... I'm sorry, but no, but also I I felt so bad because people loved it so much. So maybe Joe Duffy will come back and do some Fallen Angels for us. That would be nice. <laughs> I'll reach out to her. I'll see if I can connect with her on some kind of social platform. And I'll tell you guys if I get the answer to um, no, I any need of to these know. questions. It haunts me. So <laughs> and it, It'll haunt me. It'll haunt me till I die unless I can talk to Joe Duffy and ask her questions. Maybe one day. I'm also going to Comic-Con this year, so maybe I'll run into Joe Duffy and I can say, wait a minute. I need to ask you about the Lazarus Project. <laughs> She'll be like, wow, not like any of the other things that I've written. You don't want to talk about Star Wars? I'll be like, no, I just want to know about the Lazarus Project. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> this is one plot. Uh, that would also be very classic of me anytime I've run into creators. I'm always mentioning things that they're like, wow, why is that the one thing you want to talk about? From my Okay. Uh, cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This has been freaking delightful as per usual. Well, thanks so much for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Anytime, anytime. Um, we definitely need to do it again soon. We should also read the Wonder Woman Historia at some point. I definitely want your thoughts on that. I think you're going to like it. Uh, and um, everyone, make sure you go follow Sasha on all the things. Go check out Casually Comics. Go go follow her on Instagram. She doesn't really post on Instagram. Don't follow me there. I don't post anything. <laughs> but follow her anyways. Like, let's just, I just want you to be at like a bajillion <laughs> followers on Instagram because I think that would be awesome. But yeah. All right. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody that sent super chats, that hung out, that interacted in chat, that was cool, that followed. Y'all are awesome. And thank you to people. There were some people sending bits over on Twitch. There was Rapala gifted a sub. All of these things have happened. I missed two stretches. Okay, there. I had stretched. I'm sorry that I didn't do that earlier. Did I miss anything else? Hydrate. Well, I've definitely been doing that. But <laughs> uh, yeah. And so thank you, everybody, for joining us. Sorry that I can't see everything here. I'm getting used to this new. You'll get used to it. I'll get used to it. I like that I can bring chat up. That makes me very excited. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, is there anything you want to plug, Sasha? Is there anything you have coming up soon that we can wait in the wings? Uh, I am going to do an in-depth look at episode one of 97. So we're going to go through that, look for some references, see some Easter eggs, where they come from, all that good stuff. So it's going to be fun. I'm so excited for that. I'm so excited for that. All right. Um, just Rob is excited that that the mic is visible on screen. I like this. Yeah. Both of our mics are very visible on screen today. Um, all right. Well, have a good night. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I'll see you next time. And um, until then, uh, stay nerdy. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs>